Okay guys, it's uh, Sunday morning and um, got a couple things to report. If you guys watched us uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday we pretty much worked on a six hour painting session. Got a one hour one and then a six hour one where we uh, were working on these nights here. And these are actually based on the heraldry of um, three real life folks that um, Edward the Bruce and uh, Sir John Stewart and Sir John de Sully. And these guys were actually uh, went to Ireland in 1315. So we looked up their uh, heraldry and these guys actually went over there. So. Um, these are 15 millimeter old glory figures, and um, we already had we already had uh, Edward done worked on these two yesterday, so worked on them for seven hours, and this guy's completely done, and he is probably 97 percent done. So yeah, they take a while to do. So um, anyhow, so what we're gonna do, plan on doing this morning is finishing this guy completely up and then going to work on Edward Edward's shield okay which is going to have the same motif as the flag is going to have it's going to have this type of motif so you guys will be able to see how I do one of these lines it's uh, not difficult uh, it's obviously not going to look as intricate as this because it's on a 15 millimeter shield but um, but uh, we'll see what we can go, go with that all right so the first thing we also want to do, also want to talk about is um, off camera, I finished transferring the Citadel lead belcher into the eyedropper bottle. So we did it completely and we rinsed out this little bo bottle. I don't know that I'm going to use this for anything, um, but I wanted to see that it's kind of interesting to notice that it's all clear all the parts are completely clear which is kind of strange because when you look at it it looks like that is not the case um as soon as i find the, my other one i did such a good job of putting things away that it's not readily available <laughs> uh, where the hell did it go oh here it is i moved him out of the way this is what uh, this is the next color up the iron breaker and it looks like something in here would have been uh, a metallic color but nope they're actually completely clear bottles now if I reuse this I, uh, I want to get the rest of this uh, dried paint off but this is completely rubbery and um, Hey, good morning, Studio WGS. How are you? Or on the other side of the world. <laughs> You're in Thailand, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, this is completely, uh, completely rubber. So, um, and this is actually, now that there's nothing in there, I don't mind squeezing it. Um, this is plastic and gives a little bit. So, um, yeah, it actually says on the bottom, Games Workshop 2013. I didn't realize they had gone to these bottles not long ago. Um, you're in Malaysia, okay. Not Thailand, perfect. So, um, yeah, uh, I actually got your uh, studio, I got your idea from your videos and uh, showed my wife one of them. And let's see, not to put you on the spot or anything. This is not bad on the spot, so never hurts. For those of you who don't know, Studio always does these cool videos where he does these uh, figures on the turntable. My wife got me one of these on her own. So let's, uh, let's see. Yeah, there you go. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I like that you got a really big one because, well, 
this whole army is not going to fit on one of these. I'm afraid there's just too many units on it. So, but anyways, this is pretty cool. I need to do it outside. This lighting here is, is great for painting, but man, it washes out all the colors. So, um, what you're seeing there on the screen is not what they actually look like. So, uh, they actually don't look good to me on the screen. <laughs> They're a little washed out, but Hey, you know, it's, um, it is what it is. So. I need to order one, one of those painting rings or something like that. The, you know, the, the light rings maybe give you a little bit better light. But uh, it's plenty light. It's just washed out very much. So anyhow, um, thanks for the uh, um, inspiration to get one of those. So um, anyhow, so we're going to go back at the nights, okay? We're going to get, get back in that and uh, hopefully knock out some shields. You guys wanted to do heraldry. As you can see, it takes for freaking ever. But uh, it's fun as hell to do. Uh, it's the best thing about painting nights. So um, let's see what else we got here. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, Australian Gray. Hi, Tony. Just finished watching your one hour video where you started on the checkerboard barding. I need to watch your five hour extravaganza before watching this one. Well, you don't have to watch them in order, but you know, um, you can always do it that way. All right. So. Yeah, um, you have to watch the five hour extravaganza where I give away maybe what armies I'm gonna be working on next. I said I wasn't gonna talk about it and then I did, I just rambled. I didn't decide though, so you know, you can tell what armies I'm not gonna work on next, so. Uh, any army that you've already seen in a video, I won't be working on, guaranteed. So we're gonna be doing new things, so. All right, so let's get this what palette behaving again. He decided to misbehave overnight. There was no chaperone here. It got all wrinkly. And it's plenty moist, so that's really not an issue. All right, let's put, uh, let's get rid of Sir John Stewart. We're done with him. And, uh, and Greg, you'll know one thing that uh, after off camera, I decided to do something different. Um, I'm gonna try something for the very first time ever. I've never done this before. And um, where did there's just a little bit of a fan on here and it blew this paper away. But you know, we printed these. I'm actually not going to use these as the flag. Um, yeah, a few hours painting. Yeah, I should be three about three hours for sure. We should be able to knock this out, knock these guys out. I'm actually not going to use these flags. Um, I'm actually going to take this file. And I've already started doing it. I have a, uh, my, my laptop actually has a, a screen on it. It's a, it's a, whatever it's called. Uh, what was the name of this computer that I got back in March? I can never remember what it is. It's the Microsoft uh, Book 2, whatever it's called. It's a, anyways, it's got a screen you can draw on. Okay, it's a full laptop, but it's got a screen you can draw on it. I got a pen, Surface, Surface Book. There you go, Surface Book 2. And uh, I put this on a, I put this particular file on my, um, on a drawing program, which I'm not very familiar with. Correct, Surface Book 2. I can't remember, you know, it's, uh, the closer I get to 50, it's just, it's just going downhill. I might, uh, I might remember who I am next year, so. Keep it up, I should run for president. Anyhow, <laughs> no, no politics for me. Um, so I put this particular file, you know, half of it, because all I did was I mirrored it, and I put it on um, on uh, a program in it called Sketchbook. And I'm actually going in there and um, using my painting style, using it in drawing style, and going in and adding depth to it. And we'll see how it prints out, because um, there you go. Well, if you like... Close to 50 yourself. Or if you're like me, you don't feel old, but stuff just, I don't want to deal with that crap no more. I'm like, uh, I feel like I'm 30 with uh, 20 years of crap. I'm like two decades of stuff I don't want to deal with anymore. <laughs> but I'm actually going to go ahead and do the highlighting on the drawing program. Now, it takes a long time to do. So I was like doing it in, uh, well, I was trying to, couldn't fall asleep because of all the caffeine I've had yesterday. But I went in and, and was... Uh, uh, etching all the all the stuff on there and I don't know if I'll get that done today but um, 
because I, I'd like the, the flag to have some depth to it as well. So it's the same design. We're just going to go in there and, and, and add the highlighting and stuff in there. And, and we're going to, I took the background and, and changed it from white into like a medium gray. And then I'm filling in same thing as if I was painting it by hand, but I'm just going to do it on the drawing program. And I did kind of a test and it looks really good. So I don't know if the, um, I'm not really familiar with the, with the drawing program, so it's going to take me a while to kind of get the get the hang of it. I don't want to watch a tutorial. I don't learn that way. I just need to just start messing with it. And uh, I got quite a f I, I got quite far yesterday enough that uh, I started back over, like kind of knowing what I was doing. And we just it just depends how it's going to print on a printer if I'm if it's going to get all those kind of details. Now, I don't know if you can tell on here, but this was supposed to be a white background. Greg, this was supposed to be a white background you sent me. And there's some gradation here. So it caught that gradation with a printer. And you can't really see that on this, um, this image that you sent me. So I'm guessing the printer can catch enough of this stuff. So we'll do a test run. And if it is, then I might start a side gig making flags. Because I freaking love making flags. And... Um, Pete's Flags doesn't make everything. Actually, they don't make most things. So I'm going to, uh, that may be something I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing in the future. I'm kidding about the side gig. I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna sell my stuff. Uh, mainly because I don't wanna go to the post office. I don't like to go to the post office to begin with. Uh, it's a land of misery and incompetence. <laughs> and um, going during these times, uh, I, I really wouldn't wanna go, so. Um, yeah, I think I've, uh, I've pretty much given up on going on places that have, uh, that have a lot of misery in them. So, you know, Walmart's out. I don't want to go there. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. But, um, nah, you know, you don't get to buy them. Now, if I do them, then it'll be, it'll be for free. I don't want to go and mail stuff out, so. Well, you know, here's the thing. I'm going to enjoy doing it so much, I don't mind giving them away to people. Or I'm not going to do them at all because, you know, people can't pay me what I'm worth, so I might as well give this stuff away. <laughs> I've painted only a couple things for people. One of them is a camp for Mitch, and another one is an artillery piece for Luke. And they didn't pay me for them. But they also didn't tell me, you're going to paint this for me. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, like my benign giving of mana. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see here. Um, right now, I won't be paying anything for anybody anytime soon. Because, folks, I'm on a roll. I've never painted this much. Maybe we need this uh, pandemic more often. You know, with no... Uh, no things that I need to uh, plan for. I seem to be getting a hell of a lot more done. So, okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this. And let's, um, well, you guys are sitting here watching. We can finish this guy later. There's nothing exciting left about him. We've got like um, some horse hair and stuff. Let's just go jump on uh, Eddie's shield. How about that? Okay, let's jump on Eddie's shield now. I could use these little hand things I have. I use this for the cars, but I don't think this is gonna be at a, you know, I, I could do this to hold the figure, but I don't think it's any better than, well, I don't know, maybe it is. Let's see, let's try something. I've gotta, I've gotta keep my wrist here, because I'm not one of those pain in the air types. I see those people all the time online. I'm like, how the hell do you guys do that? I don't have uh, bad wrists, but um, let's see if this is even an option. I got one of these to work on my Gaslands cards because they're multiple pieces and they're hard to hold. Yeah, it's okay. Let's see what, uh, hold on a second, let's do that. Okay. Speaking of camps, will you be doing one for this army? Absolutely. Absolutely, so. 
and it should be it should have some humor to it. I don't know that it's going to have any elephant poo on it, <laughs> but uh, it's yes. I, I normally I'm not a fan of doing camps normally, but um, but yeah, this one will have uh, some stuff on there. I need to find my sheep. Uh, they're, they're lost. I've got two. I've got two sheep that I cannibalized from something else that I did not paint. Um, I cannibalized them, but I've got a whole pack of. I want to say Magister Militum, or actually I've gotten them so long ago, they were chariot sheep. I, I believe that's what they are. They're about this size, and they're floating around somewhere. I, I bought them 15, 20 years ago. I never did anything with them. And, you know. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to, let's get our little, let's get our little shield motif thing here. We're going to, um, oh, we're going to be like that. And the fan's only like on three. Need heavier paper. Okay, we're going to uh, cover this thing in a coating of uh, like a light gray, the darkest uh, shade color that we're going to have. So we've got white there, we've got black there. Uh, we should be good to go. And don't expect this to be perfect because uh, sometimes with these shields, you've got to like do some cleanup. So uh, I, I expect to have to clean something up. I don't know if you got, all right, how about this? Let's get, Get my glasses out of here. I don't need them. I can't see what I'm doing. All right, and let me see. This is the shield is here. Okay, so you guys should be able to see what it is. Sorry, it's upside down, but I'm not going to be one of those people that paints. Uh, you, you've seen them on the internet that paints a portrait. And they paint. You don't know what they're painting, and they paint it upside down, and then they flip it over at the last minute. And it's, you know, Martin Luther King or or somebody. Yeah, those those people are amazing. I still think that that's. that's that's a gimmick. There's no way that people can do that kind of stuff. I'm a skeptic when I see stuff like that. I'm like, holy cow, that's that's too good to be true. But I can't paint upside down. Nope, that's outside my skill set. It's just practice, and I'm not going to practice that. Maybe after I get all these DVA armies painted that I have, Wolf of Never. Okay. This doesn't need to be totally even because we're going to cover most of it. But I just kind of want a background color here that when we put the this line rampant on it. Some of it will show. All right, now this is way too big for what we're gonna do. We need to grab our most nimble brush we have. All right, now, let's do a couple things. Let's grab a product that I used to use a lot and I don't use anymore. And I think the last time I painted something that was very detailed like this, I used it and I think it made a difference. And it might just be psychological and it didn't help at all. But regardless, My stuff's too well organized, and I had it all the way in the back. That's this Flowade from Liquitex. Now, this is something you can, you literally use like a drop of it, and you're good to go. Now, where's this empty bottle I had? Because we're going to put this little guy to use. All right. I don't know if this will help. If I try it and it doesn't work, then we'll punt and start, we'll start over. 
I'm just going to use the top of it. Okay, what color is this thing? Blue. All right. Where's the blue that I used for? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that blue. Let's grab my blues and see if I can get one. Nope, way too light. This blue, you know, look at the color of this blue. Looks like French blue, right? Now watch when you open it. Look at the color that's on the tip. That's not the same color. Weird. And it's, it's totally mixed. That, that blue just misbehaves that way. I guess if you guys can hear me okay, I'm not speaking as loud as I normally do because the girls are asleep. Um, this royal blue should be fine. I'm going to check it on the, uh, mix this thing up. Oh, it sounds like there's a turret in there. A couple of these paints have been sitting so long, I think it would before I ever got them, that um, there's a mass in them somewhere. So there's liquid, liquid, and then the other thing. Not so much that I need a mixing ball in there, but we don't need much of this. Oh, that's perfect. Well, you can't see. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, it's before five o'clock in the morning here, which sounds insane, but this is this is the time I thrive in. One drop. And I think when I used it before, I may have used it for like a painted flag. It just helps the, the brush not sticking. It, it may have just been bullshit, like I said, but I decided to try it. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so let's, let's break down this shape. So what we're planning on doing, where's my pencil? I don't know why I'm doing this, but sometimes when I talk myself through stuff, it's actually easier for me. So my plan is not to do this at a go, okay? But I've got this, uh, I've got this shape, and I'm going to. Oh, and by the way, this little crescent that's in there, I'm not going to put that on the on the line. So if you guys were excited to find out how the hell I was going to paint a crescent, that's not happening, okay? Uh, so um, we're going to do this shape on it. That's if you break down the line, I'm going to put this line on it. That's going to look like. That's what I'm going to do first, okay? Then from here, there's going to be, goes up a little bit. Obviously, this is not the scale. It comes down like that. And then this one, at the end of where this starts, we're going to go Okay, that's the basic shape that it has so far. Okay, and then uh, the tail comes out of here. We're not worried about that. We can put that in later. But the same angle that this comes by, this hand comes out to here. And obviously we're not worried about the fingers and stuff. We're worried about the proportions so that we get everything kind of pointing in the right direction. And then this one comes up like this, oh, I'd like a V. Okay, and then we can worry about the other stuff. So this is what I'm going to try to paint on the figure first. Then we can fill in as we go, okay? So you're wondering, what in the hell am I doing? Well, that's my plan anyways. You know, I don't try to paint everything at a, at a go. If I was painting, say, a cross, um, I would put one straight line and then turn it around and pull another straight line. So. You kind of break things off into shapes, and I, I find it's much more successful to do it that way. At least for me. Um, okay. Now you guys will see if this is a win or it'll be a total fail. Let's see how this black is doing over here. All right. And make sure it's on screen, so we'll put it here. Okay, now... Put a little bit of that. You don't need much of it. 
actually the proportion of the flow extender is like one drop to, it's a ridiculous proportion, almost like a 5% or even less. I just feel like it, it just applies smoother. Now, let's do a test run on how thin that is. Look at that. Look how thin that line is. Well, we could do anything with that. All right, let's get to it. Now, we wanna make sure we leave some meat above it because we're gonna have to build up the head and we need to leave some meat below it. We, we can't put it right towards the edges of, of, this, uh, of this shield. All right, so we're gonna put, and there needs to be a little bit more space on this side of them. Okay, so let's start. See, I already did it. I'm already too far to one side. No problem. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna use another brush for this so we can keep the shape on that little one. I told you it was gonna take a couple tries doing this. So we need to go, we're too far over there. All right, no problem. Maybe it's better to show this like this online. You don't think, man, how can Tony do it right the first time? I didn't. I didn't do it right the first time. Hey, I needed to cover this in a different color anyways, because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, showing through. Now, the cool thing is, is I covered this so thin, I can still see the line I made, so I can move it over some. Okay. All right, this paint's still good here? Yeah, all right. tail. Let's put that in. Guess what I'm getting at is do something really light and did that on the shields too. Do something really light to kind of get your proportions right before you jump in and and you're all in the wrong place. I don't know, it looks like now actually the first line was in the right place. I made a mistake thinking I made a mistake. Okay, I think we got the, I think I'm pretty happy with where that's gonna sit on there. All right, let's start filling this thing up. Now we're gonna need more, more stuff than that. So I don't know if this flow aid's helping a lot, but I want to apply smoother and not catch on things. So the top of this guy is also going to have uh, going to have like a hat, and then he's going to have an open mouth. Okay, let's build that in. And then the thickest part of this is here. I 
I was complaining about my brushes the other paint session. Maybe it was last weekend. Maybe it was even earlier than last weekend. How they were fraying. And this weekend they have literally, they have really kicked ass as far as staying in shape. And these are just uh, Zhuang Cheng rif uh, rifles. These are Zhuang Cheng um, plaid uh, brushes. They're not quality by any means, by any stretch of the imagination, and they work fine. There's nowhere here, I've mentioned this before, there's nowhere here in town to buy Windsor and Newton brushes. People rave about them. Uh, I don't like that they're $10 a piece or so. I would, I would give one of them a shot, but I've bought enough brushes over the year that I, years that I'm not gonna buy one sight unseen. So, especially at those prices. So one day I may get one, but I've gotta go to a place that has them and I can check them out. Okay, now, so far so good, but I don't like how, I don't like how this leg is too far out here. See what I mean? It's easy. This is easy to fix. You don't like something, you can just come in here and and clean stuff out. And I don't think this is necessarily hard. You just have to pace yourself and just go at it slowly. Keep your wrist braced. And um, I was doing some detail stuff yesterday morning and it was a little, I, I came back from uh, dropping my daughter off at um, at uh, her swimming class, and I had a Starbucks coffee, and I just had too much caffeine running through my brains, through my veins, that um, it just it felt uneasy. I didn't really have the shakes, but I just I like couldn't stand still almost so. Okay, this is kind of at this angle like this. And then this one's kind of at the same angle as well. Now, I'm going to make some artistic licenses to it. I'm probably not going to add the red on the on the tips of the of the of the fingers of the line. I don't think it looks right. Um Now, all we're going to do is once we got the basic shape in, we're going to start filling this, this in. Let's add some more paint here. Still in the same shade. And let's just fill in the paint. So we're going to come in here. And this is relaxing because it's a slow buildup. I'm not trying to do the whole thing and at a go. If I did a whole thing at a go, I'd try it a thousand times and wouldn't get it right. So um, get the proportions right and then fill in. And you know, you work on it slowly. It's easy to not overcorrect. It's drying really fast here on the pellet. And eh, no worries. You can mix it up multiple times. We're using so little amount of paint, it's ridiculous. 
All right, let's put some hands in. Pause. Okay, so this was helpful. Having this helping hands was helpful because, well, I could have held it against this, but you know, it's a little bit less uh, stressful. Relaxing, I should say. Okay, we've got one part of the tail that comes out here. We've got one part of the tail that comes out here. And another part that comes out here. All right, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the background and bring it all the way up to the white. And then we'll go in and start adding the other details because these, um, like the furries and stuff that are coming off of his, of his uh, paws, I don't want to do that and then have to try to get the white in behind it. Okay. So let's, um, let's see if we can take a look at what I've got there and uh, let's go in. Now I'm now I'm being really defensive about this guy. I'm not going to uh, use it for this next stage. <laughs> we can use one that's a little bit more incorrigible. All right. Oh, the white died. It's dead enough that I need to put some more down. Black's still fine. Okay, good. Okay. It's too wet there. We need to move somewhere else. See if we can do it with this brush or it's not it's not fine enough. Other thing that helps is when you're going around these complicated things, just almost do like a stippling. So
Okay. Let's go up a level. You go a little bit more now, and a little bit more white. And then there'll be one shade on top of that. It'll be just the, the pure, just the real deal. Now, let's see if we want too far. Nah, we'll be fine with this. I said I wasn't going to use this brush. Yeah, I lied. Stay flexible. You never know when you're going to have to. Man, this brush kicks ass. And it's a round. See, I actually prefer liners, but this round is behaving like a liner. I've said it before, what's written on the brush doesn't mean jack. Just go in there, look at a pack of brushes, take a look at them, see if they look like they're gonna behave, and, you know, go for it. Because these are brushes that come to a pack, I think it's 10 in a pack and they're like $4, so. Well, this seems like it's taking, uh, like when you go and paint eyes, it's really fast. <laughs> It'll be all, all be worth it. It'll all be worth it. At this point, I'm like, okay, this is going to turn out well. Because the proportions of it are well done there. Let's make sure I don't have any comments here. Oh man, geez. Uh, totally appreciate how difficult it is to paint and shoot video at the same time. Um, yeah, but you know what's worse? Editing the video. I detest editing the video. Uh, ever thought of making your own transfers? No. Um, no. I have not. Decal, no. Never thought about it. I don't think Tony ever sleeps. It's overrated. I have a steady hand. My hand is good for flocking. Wow. Yeah, I'm... Well, my hand is, my wrist is rusted, and I can feel the caffeine. I, I just, we had some home brew iced coffee here, and I can already feel, it's not twitching, it's just, you kind of feel like you're uneasy. It's not really my hand, it's just the rest of me, so we need to, we need to not do any more of that for a little while. Um, I'm a caffeine junkie, but... Yeah, I've never had a steady hand issue. Knock on wood, we don't need that. Yeah, I stayed up till after 11 o'clock at night. And I'm up at five anyways, so.
The worst thing I can do is wake up and everybody's awake already when I wake up. You do not want to see that Tony. I gotta have my own time. Okay, now we're just gonna use straight white. And I don't mind, uh, I don't mind doing this because I'm building, I'm painting one unique shield. If I had to paint a whole army with these, yeah, no, we, we, we wouldn't do that. The worst thing about um, filming and painting is you do all this work and then you find out that <clears throat> you find out that this is, you know, it'll only upload at 720p and 720 just doesn't cut it. But that's, you know, it's the technology stuff that pisses me off because you can't get a you can't get a straight answer from anyone. It's like you're dealing with a bunch of politicians. Never can get a straight answer. Like, well, you know, if you look on, well, how to upload it at uh, 1080, and then you look at this, and you need to make sure this is checked. Yeah, it's done. You need to make sure this is done. Yep, that's done. You make sure all that stuff's in place, and you still can't do it, and you can't get an answer from anyone, and or something will work one time. I had a video where I was I'm watching, and I've got uh, you know the 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 text the 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 chat box up. I knew the chat box was up and I go and check the video in another day and the chat box is gone. You can't see anything anybody's saying. So I don't know why. And then a couple days later you come back and now it's back on. That, that kind of stuff just drives me bananas. This painting, piece of cake, right? No issues. If there's an issue, I can solve it. But uh, the technology crap is just, you know, drives me crazy. I'm not made for that kind of stuff. So... You know, it's like if you ask somebody, what's two plus two? Is it four? And they say, depends. No. I mean, <laughs> no more variables, damn it. <laughs> we're going to put the eye on the, on the line. I think that's as far as we're, we're going to be able to go at this point with the white. So right now we're going to switch to blue. Look at this. You're misbehaving because you're on film, aren't you? I guess it could be wetter, but man, it couldn't be much more. I think the fan may have a little bit to do with it, although it's kind of, I'd say it's on medium, but I don't paint in hot weather. It's bad enough I got a game in it, but I don't paint in hot weather. This is... Um... I'm not getting paid to sweat right now.
All right, so we're going to bring the line up. Let's see, this is not a fast process. So I left it for last. Because you don't want to have, you don't want to start with this and then have all this other stuff that's piling up. And you're like, man, I haven't gotten anything done other than the one shield. Well, I already have gotten the other stuff done. I'm doing this last. So um, it's a different outlook on it. I, I prefer it that way. All right, now let's bring a lot more blue in here. I think this flow extender is helping because one of the issues I was having with these brushes is um, I would get like this glop of paint, very small, towards the end. It was almost like it was drying on the end of the paintbrush. And I was not able to get to a fine point. There we go. Let's get it on white so you guys can see. This thing has an incredible point. And I think that this flow extender is not is allowing it to not dry as fast on the brush. It may be an optical illusion, but that's what it seems like what is happening. And if that's the case, then it was the right call to use for this because I, I don't want this paint on the brush to dry on the brush. I want it to dry on here. So, and the flow extender, what it allows you to do is to, a um, little bit of like, a bit, a little bit of retarder. I also have retarder, but I don't want to keep my, my paint wet. I don't, I don't want to do any mixing on the, on the actual figure. Okay, let's go in here and try to add some furries to them. Ever so slightly. Let me just take a step back here. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We need to we need to mix more of this. Now we're gonna add some white for the highlight. We need to do some highlighting on them. Did I go too far? Probably not. It should be fine.
do a tiny little bit of more highlighting. I like how they used a dragon, a, a, a lion motif for something in Scotland. And where's the nearest lion to Scotland? I know that um, animals have longer ranges than they currently do, but still, there's. I bet there's never been lions in the British Isles. <laughs> Maybe they just use it as an exotic animal, the same way we'd use a, a dragon or something like that. All right, so I'm thinking. What do you guys think? I don't think there's much purpose in trying to do any more to it. I don't want to spend a half of a freaking day on it. Now, we're gonna put a little bit of, we're gonna do a little red tongue on them. Let's give them some tongue action. You gotta go really thin on that. <laughs> Tiniest of red bits. And that way he's tied into to the flag. And he's got the same motif of flag stack going on for it. This is a this is a one shot thing, and I hope I don't screw this up. But if I do, I could fix it. I'm not dealing with anything that I can't fix here. Ooh. Into the breach. How far does it go? Long. You know what? I am going to go ahead and do his claws in red. Let's see where we go with that. Um, four on each one? Cool. All right. Look like berries on a bush. See what you guys think. Got that little bit of a shine from the... There we go. Hey, it'll work. It's 15 millimeter, right? This is why I don't do 28s. I don't have a whole day to do one shield. Or maybe even longer. <laughs> 
You paint at 3 a.m. too, best time. Yeah, I agree. Okay. That shield's a wrap. Or at least it looks like it is for the case. Now, I, I like this. I like this little, having this flow extender in that. That, that. that was really helpful. Like I said, I don't know if this, I don't know if this helped. I have a feeling that it did. It, and it was, it was on keeping the end of this, of the, um, of the brush clear of something gumming it up. I and mean, I don't know where the hell it went. Yeah, it's still clear. Maybe I need to start using that with all my painting. Cause that's what's, that's what creates, uh, the uh, the biggest issue is you have something that gums up the end of the brush and then you don't have a fine tip on it. So I don't know. Maybe we'll do that a little. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll, we'll we find a use for that little bottle. All I had to do was empty up a, a Games Workshop bottle. I would have found that out. All right. Well, I, I kind of like this. I don't have to worry about scuffing up the uh, the horse. Okay, so we've got to do um, some reins on him. Let's, uh, let's, let's keep using Clampy here. I got this thing. I don't use it very often, so. Excellent, 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 excellent. Let's, um. All right, let's go get us a base we're gonna mix the hell out of this stuff yeah, I don't like doing this hobby stuff for money because then when I start getting paid for it I start thinking wow I really didn't enjoy doing that so it's not really worth my time I'd rather not do it but a long time ago a long, long time ago, in the 80s, I did a commission one time for something. Uh, well, it might have been 1990. It might not have been the 80s, but I did a commission for someone to um, to paint a model form, and I I detested it the entire way. So I don't want to do. I don't want to do things for payment. So. Whew. Yeah. Mm. The thing for me is, is I don't mind if something takes a long time to do. I just want it to be forgiving. So when you screw up, it's easy to fix. If it's something that's like, you know, you blow it and you're up a creek, I'm not interested. But any of this painting stuff, yeah. I booger it up or something. I, I can fix it. It's not um, it's not that difficult to uh, correct that. All right, so we're not using our. We need to frame this. Where's this guy? Oh, I'm I'm using the one I didn't want to use. Uh, this this brush has gone to a special place in uh, Valhalla here. We're gonna frame this guy for. Put it by itself. We got to do any kind of really specialized stuff. You know, usually the, the finest detail brushes I save for the faces. Yeah, we're not using that one for faces. We can do faces with other brushes. That one just um, performed incredible. So. Ability here. 
Yeah, we don't want anything to scuff up that shield, but if it does, it's not the end of the world. I, you know, all of the, all of the stuff is there that needs to be, um, the proportions and everything. So, Ooh. wanted a color that had some yellow to it to kind of bring that color into the the side look of this horse because it was looking a little too um, white and blue. It's nice to add a little bit of other touch in there. Not very bright yellow, but uh, you know, something that has a yellow uh, tinge to it. So, and so he decided to go with this color here. Something complimentary. Got to go light on this because otherwise it's going to look very yellowish there. Jeffrey Smith, hello again. Do you see yourself as a painter who games or a painter who paint or a gamer who paints? Probably a painter who games. Um, because I don't want to play just, I don't like to game every game. There's lots of game. I, I don't want to game for gaming purposes. Um, no, that's not what I wanted to say. Just because it's a game doesn't mean I want to play it. Um, Mostly a painter, I'd say. I spend most of my time painting. Um, I don't want to game with just anybody. Um, if somebody say says buys a new game for me, like a, a board game, I don't want to necessarily play it just for the game's sake. I don't play games by myself. So uh, probably more of a painter. I don't have a... I'd be more likely to go on a, on a binge buying figures than I would be buying other games. I'm not a rules collector. You know how some people are like, you always have one guy in your group who keeps buying games and likes reading the rules. That's not me. I, uh, I think the, the rules are a, um, are a necessary evil to uh, be able to play the game, but I, I, don't, I don't thrive on that stuff. So to sock or not to sock? So let's do this guy here and we put socks on him. Let's see. The reason we did it is because this, he does not have a white caparisoned horse and it looked like it probably would have been a good fit for it. Uh, oh, it looks like I still have to do the tail on him. Cool. Um, I think it was probably a good fit because it wasn't white on white here because this has a, because this has a white uh, horse. Um, I 
don't think I'm going to put socks on him. I don't think I'm going to put socks on him. Now, what about the one in the middle? What? Oh, he's completely done. Did we do socks on him? I think we did. We did. No, we didn't. Well, he's staying as is. Johnny Stewart. The thing I like the most about painting, about this that I'm doing is, is getting the wild hair of, say, I'm going to do an army. Now, let's say I wanted to build a Hungarian army. Not that I've already done this, but, and then go, okay, what, what do the troops consist of? What figures would I go and find? What kind of a palette I would do? And, um, you know, what color, which, which guys I would paint drab, which ones I wouldn't. Uh, find out or what the heraldry, who's going to be next to who in, on the stand. I love doing all that stuff. Um, I love fig figuring out what figures go on something. So I'm the last person that wants to buy a DBA army pack already made up. I want to make it up myself. So that's if, you, if I'm buying a DBA army pack that somebody already made up, that takes a, a good chunk of the fun for me. So... But I'm the exception. Most people don't like that, you know. Um, you know, you guys have seen I painted for seven hours yesterday. What did I get done? Almost two figures, two night figures with heraldry and stuff. I don't want to spend that much time painting figures, and then I don't get to make any say in which ones I'm painting. You know, um, if I'm spending a whole weekend painting a stand of nights, then I can justify buying $20 worth of them to pick which nights I'm going to paint, even though I'm using three and not using 12. So for me, it's worth it because my time's worth it. And it's not like I'm going to just paint them quicker because they're going to look sloppy. I mean, I could take even longer, but at some point it's a, uh, it's a point of diminishing returns. So, but yeah, I don't want, I don't want somebody to pick out figures for me. That's, that's a huge part of, just like I don't want somebody picking out a color palette. That's, that's a lot of fun. And that's one of those things where I look at other people's figures and I, and I either like or don't like them as based on what palette they used or what tones they used and stuff, so. There's my long-winded answer. <laughs> hey, we got time. I could be long-winded, right? <laughs> uh, we're gonna mix up the stone gray with some black. Let's get Mr. White back over, I mean, Mr. Water over here. The water boy. I've used this little water cup. This is a kid's cup from a, we'll call it a fast food restaurant that, let's see, my daughter's 15 and she was probably four when she got that. So I've had that over a decade, certainly, but uh, you know, it serves its purpose. Kitty cup. Yeah, I got this one that's shaped like a grenade. I'm not going to use that for a water cup. Get all nasty. That one's nice. That one just holds the brushes. <laughs> I don't like using things and they get destroyed in the process. Uh, I like taking care of things and when you can. I go through enough brushes as it is. So I got this brush cleaner stuff that I picked up maybe a couple of years ago. And I can't really recommend it because it's not that it doesn't work well. You can get all the paint out, but it's not worth my time to spend an hour trying to clean all the paint out of one brush. I'd rather just move on to a different, different brush. I've done it a couple of times and I'm like, I, it takes a long time like to get this, this brush completely clean. It just isn't worth my time, you know? Um, you just need to decide whether or not it's worth your, now that doesn't mean I don't use it, but I'm just saying there's a, I, I, 
I found that a couple of weeks ago. I was I wanted to use this brush and see if I could bring it back to life. It ended up uh, lathering that stuff in, and then and then using the palm of my hand to kind of scrub it out. And it does work. It'll get all of the it'll get all the paint out, but it'll take. I'll rub my my hand dry, the palm of my hand completely dry, trying to do that. It's just it's not worth it. You know, not when you can get ten brushes for for four dollars. So. Um, I need to find another brush source though. I may end up ordering some on Amazon as I really don't want to go to the to the Walmart place to get brushes anymore. So um, you go there, there's a whole lot of drama, and then you get there and then they, not, they may not be any. Last time I went there, I went through four packs and I said that they used to last me about a whole year, but at the rate I'm painting now, yeah, I'm going through brushes faster than I ever have, but I'm also getting a lot more painting done than I ever have. So they kind of go hand in hand with each other. So I may try to Amazon some and just see how they work. Because we don't really have a art store that I could go and get brushes at. I almost picked some up um, the other day just to kind of test them out that they had at, um, what was it, was it Hobby Lobby that had them? But they were all liners and they had really long, um, um, the tips of them were really long. I can't remember. I don't know what the hell it's called. The brush part was really long, which normally I like, but they, they had, they spent, they wasted too much of their effort on making this brush part too comfy, like contoured and had like comfort grip. And I'm like, yeah, it's not going to work because I don't need all that stuff. You know, I had one comfort grip type brush that I picked up one time and I, I hated it because it, it was just, it was, it ended up being more uncomfortable than just a regular brush. I talked myself out of it, but I may go in there and I think they're, they're a little bit more expensive. You can get like $6 for a pack of like six or something like that. I'll just grab one of their 40% off coupons and give them a try. So when I get closer, I still have one more pack. And what I'm talking about is these guys right here. I could probably mail order them, but premium calling, calling this premium is a joke, but, uh, Premium synthetic, yeah. So you can only get synthetic stuff here in town. You gotta, those Windsor and New Newtons are nowhere to be found. So, um, ever suffered from painter's block? I can sometimes go three months, then I just can't pick up a brush or start or finish a project. Um, yes, all the time. But ever since I've started doing this filming, I'm like on a high. So, um, and this is why I do it, because it keeps me moving forward. So the fact that some of you guys find this interesting is, you know, hey, you, hopefully you guys are working on your hobby while you're listening to my my ramble, because that's what I do. Um, I was, um, I love YouTube, and it's kind of my way of giving back to it. Um, and uh, for many years, not for many years, but for like two years or three years, um, this is what I would have in the background when I was painting, but what was happening is, is I spent too much time trying to find the perfect thing to watch. And then when I did while I was painting, and then, uh, when I did, I ended up just watching it and not painting. So I need to do, I'm doing this so I can just keep going, just powering through. And, um, the fact that some of you guys might find this even the least bit entertaining is, is a bonus. So, um, yeah. Painter's block? No. Not right now. But in the past, absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, I'd rather be doing something else than doing this. I'd rather be playing uh, uh, Field of Glory uh, on the computer or, you know, uh, playing Assassin's Creed or something else, you know. But at the end of the day, this doesn't make me angry and I'll end up getting pissed off at the computer for whatever reason, you know. <laughs> I picked up the video game the other day. Um, 
I haven't played it in, geez, probably a month since the beginning of August. I started playing some of the Assassin's Creed that's in Greece. I don't love the game, but it's something to do, and it's absolutely beautiful. So, anyhow, so I was playing that, and it took me three minutes to get pissed off at it. You know, I, I, I jumped back into the game, and then I'm like, oh, let me go over to that hill or whatever, and I encountered... Uh, I wanted to avoid something, and I got into a, uh, a fight with a with a wolf, and I ran away from him, and I had to go talk to this guy, and in talking to him, I was really careful, so I didn't stab him while we dealt with a wolf, and then I went and pressed the button to, to talk to him, and, and it changed at the very last minute to assassinate, and I killed the guy, so I had to do all that shit over. That kind of stuff doesn't happen in painting, okay? So that's why this is all a positive experience, whereas you go gaming or something like that. that kind of stuff also doesn't happen in a face-to-face -face game well at least with the people i'm playing with uh, i don't have bad experiences with with the gamers that uh, we play with other than the freaking the hot box we're playing with is just unbearably hot this time of year uh, i don't have an issue with the people so um i've kind of stopped doing that for a little while because it creates um I'm not going to say stress, but discomfort. So I have not had painter's block lately because I've really focused on this. So and luckily there's not a whole lot of TV that really catches my attention. So it's not like I, I can, I'm, I'm watching something while I'm doing this. So being able to do this video really these kind of things really keeps me on task and keeps me producing so the gamers are really few and far between that do this kind of stuff and what's really few and far between is people that paint this stuff because hardly anybody paints anymore Hardly anybody painted to begin with, and then hardly everybody paints anymore. So, the people that paint are going to do it because of, I would imagine, therapy, like I do. You know, this is your, at the end of the day, you have something to show for this. And you don't have to repaint these guys. I mean, they're done. Uh, got a little bit of a saddle showing what color would be good here. Uh, just a straight brown would probably be fine. So, let's go grab our chocolate brown chocolate brown but i've had painter's block many 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 times <sighs> many times usually when it's like I, i've kind of started doing this thing that i call paint what you know it's not like it's a seminar or something but um what will happen is like let's say i'm going to do this night i'm going to do this figure and I'm, I'm cogitating about painting them and i'm like well, let's see. Uh, I know he's going to have a striped shield, but I don't know what color cloth I'm going to put on him. Well, if I use one that's too dark, then the horse is not going to be right. And then I'm not going to... You end up like analysis paralysis and you end up doing nothing and end up going and, and going and playing a video game or something else. Um, I've tried to avoid doing that and, and, and do the paint as you know. Like You know what color you want his shield to be. That's that's without a doubt. Just go and paint the shield. You don't have to do it in a certain order. And then as you eliminate options, eventually it will be obvious what the choice will be for um, for a figure. I thought if I was really good with one of those drawing programs, what I would do is I would take a picture of, of the figure, okay, uh, unpainted, and then I would put them on the drawing program and I could just like select areas and go, okay, let's make all this blue. And then let's make this yellow and then just see how the colors interact with each other before you go and paint to alleviate some of that paralysis stuff. But I really haven't experienced that in the last year. I've just kind of like, no, nope, I can, I can reach anything I can see. So, um, I'm trying to just, just keep the ball moving, you know, just keep the momentum going. So. 50% of my regular gaming circle are painters who game. Wow, that's amazing. You must be in the UK. I bet you are. I know you've told me. 
Um, the projects that cause block are mainly those that keep up with them. Love painting when there is no pressure. I'm getting more done and there's, I don't, I don't need to do this by a certain time period. Um, right now what's driving me to keep doing this is I'm already want to work on the next army, whoever they may be. So you asked if I was a painter or a gamer. I'm definitely a painter because, um, I'm not excited to paint, to play these guys. Um, uh, Aberdeen, Scotland. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Hey, it's your hometown team. Um, not quite. I, I got, I got some pre-feudal Scots also waiting in the wings. Um, again, they're, they're really, there's some troops that really don't have a lot of, um, excitement. And I don't mean that ugly. I just mean that it's real easy to get excited about painting Crusader Knights or or something that's um, that's fancy. But an army like uh, like many of the Book One armies, uh, Biblicals, Dark Age stuff, where everybody's wearing you know drab clothes like this, it's hard to get excited about, you know. Um, and I like given these guys their kind of time in the sun. So I'm all for doing another army of, of drab looking guys. Um, the Essex figures I have for the pre-feudal Scots, I think are actually molded really well. And um, they're done very, um, they're very minimalist, which means they'll paint really fast. And they come with separate shields. So I think I have three or four poses, that, that only three or four poses but they have separate shields so i'll be able to mix them up with putting a shield on them or not and now I, all of a sudden i got eight poses so i think they'll look i think they'll look pretty good i'm excited to do them when i painted the uh, when i brought the 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 light horse to do for the uh for the uh for the irish i ended up buying the uh the pre-feudal scots cavalry as well so um except they didn't come with a leader but we're probably going to end up using a guy with like a Norman type shield for the leader because I'm, I'm going to do a pre-feudal Scots around the time of maybe around Macbeth or something like that. So, you know, the Normans are already around. So he got one of the fancy teardrop shaped shields for, for him. But um, the rest of the cavalry on him is, is pretty, um, is, is not super exciting. Do I still have them here? I wonder where I put them. I thought, I'm, I thought I had them over here. Is this them? No, they're around here somewhere. So, I don't know if I'll do them next, but they're definitely on my short list. And they fight, uh, uh, Mitch has Norman, so we can do that. And the other thing is, is that I got the Little Big Man Studios uh, flags coming in 15 millimeter scale, or my Irish ones coming out of. And they also have a Welsh and Scottish stuff in there as well. So we're going to be, um, I get excited about flags. So, um, okay. We got the horse here. Oh, we needed to bring the saddle up. So, you know, I mentioned yesterday, I've got all kinds of, I really need to, it'd be nice if I could just sit down and do a hundred years war French army because uh, both of the Harbach guys each have a hundred years war English army. They pick them up, uh, they don't paint, so they've got to buy whatever's available to buy. So if people are selling a certain thing, that's what's available to buy. So they each bought a hundred years war English army. No French, so it makes sense to buy them. But the thing is, is that it's just too good an army. I'd rather paint stuff that's more obscure or um, less exciting. So I'm enjoying painting these more obscure armies with some of the second tier type figures. These aren't second tier, but you know, some of these figures that have been around for 30 years or nobody gives them a second look. And, um, making them shine. I'm enjoying that. Okay. I think Eddie's about done. I think Eddie's about done here. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't go with a red Chevron on his shield as well. 
Uh, it's a little bit too much Carrick on there. So, um, yeah. Now, I think I am going to do, because this other knight also has the black lining on it, on his, um, on his squares, I think I'm going to put black lining on his chevron as well, make that pop a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Maybe Jeffrey, you know why are there? Why do they use lions and uh, lion motifs in Scotland when there's not a lion within two thousand miles of uh, Scotland ever? <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with lions. The hell of a nice motif. Just kind of, uh, I guess the same reason they picked a, a dragon for Wales, right? There's not a dragon at all, and uh, the Welsh have the dragon. <laughs> Same thing, wishful thinking, right? <laughs> and this doesn't have to be super black. It can be kind of thinned down a little bit just to kind of give an extra little shadow between the, the things. I've started doing this a little bit more as I go on, and, and I really like it. I've seen people's black line things before, and, and I like how it looks. I know I've said this before. It looks kind of like a comic book to me, and I don't mean that in a bad way because there's, there's some nice-looking comics. Um, one of those, one of the nice-looking comics. Yeah, there's definitely more painters in the UK. I'd say the best painters are in the UK, as a general rule. I don't know what it is. Maybe we have too many other distractions here in the US. Maybe the weather's not as good. You guys all have basements. Is that standard issue for your houses to all have basements? I live in Florida, so, you know, there's no basements here. No such thing. Never lived in a house with a basement. The good thing about no basements is I don't have to walk up and down these stairs. I lived in a two-story condo before and it was a pain in the ass when you leave something upstairs. The lion was an import from all the Norman, French, and Belgian knights that took lands in Scotland. The Scottish national animal is a unicorn. Really? True story, huh? Wow. Not that I'm going to paint one of the armies because um, Mitch has them. They don't look very nice, but he has an army of them. The picks, the picks have, if you look at the little big man studio stuff, some of the flags that they have for the picks are freaking awesome looking. I mean, just amazing. They've got like this blue man group looking guy with a spear. That's just really cool. <laughs> really, really cool. Um, but Mitch already has them. There's no point in us being both having the same army unless it's something I, you know, desperately had to have, you know. That's the other thing. A lot of armies don't get chosen. Not because they're not exciting, but because there's just not a lot of information on them. Like, Speaking of picks, the guys that were before the picks, the Caledonians, they don't get any. They don't get any love. Why? Because you don't know what the hell they wore, you know. So that that stuff kind of works against them. Um, 
I mean, I'd paint them. I wouldn't be scared. I'd, I can pull things out of my ass and kind of know what looks like it'd probably be okay. But, you know, that's an army that doesn't get any love. Um, I've seen maybe only one of those ever painted. Um, same thing with Sam Knights and uh, Italian Hill Tribes. Nobody paints those guys. Nobody knows what the hell they were. <laughs> it's hard to... Oh, we got to do the back of the shield. Let's not forget that. I, there's one There's one figure that I forgot to paint the back of the shield after he was already varnished. I just went in there and painted the back of his shield already on top of the varnish. You can't tell. It's in a spot where it doesn't really need varnish. It's not going to get it in any contact with anyone. So... Let's lighten this up a little bit. This color will work. I'm not that picky at this point. Let's add a little bit of brown to it. I don't put my best effort in painting the back of shields. It's not, it's kind of a wasted uh, effort to begin with, so. Yeah, I'm fascinated by you people in the uh, you people, you people in the uh, in the British Isles and and the interaction that you have with with each other. It's 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 really funny. And I mean, you know, the the Wales, Ireland, uh, Scotland, England type thing. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> I like all of you guys the same. How about that? <laughs> it's probably like the same thing we do here with us states. You know, where you pick on people from West Virginia and stuff like that. <laughs> so in Scotland, do you guys, because I know, I know what the feeling is in England for the most part, but in Scotland is the feeling that, um, um, is the feeling that the, um, uh, that the Normans are the bad guys as well. That seems to be most of the feeling in the in uh, England. I wonder if that translates up there. I would imagine it's probably the same. Um, as an outsider, I, I, it never occurred to me that, that would be the case. But you know, I'm just over here on the outside, just kind of minding my own business. Uh, I was minding my own business until I asked the question, so <laughs> I don't want to start a revolt. <laughs> Oh man. Um, the Normans. I always liked the Normans more than the Vikings. I just feel like the Vikings just freaking destroyed and burned. You can't just burn shit down. I, I don't know. I don't have a the Vikings are kinda like the the like the Mongols. Like I have no I have no liking for them at all. I mean in reality all these nations are probably, you know, the warmongers and by today's standards and, and Horrible folks. You don't want to be conquered by any of them, but Vikings and Mongols, nah, I don't care for, I don't care for those two. Uh, wouldn't keep me from building an army. That's, that's irrelevant, but. Man, we got a million like little uh, little things on here. Let's take care of this. I don't like all these little notifications on there. Okay, yeah, I don't want to watch this video right now. I'm live on the channel. Well, no shit, I'm on it. Um, somebody shared my post. I don't know what that is. Okay, we'll check out what that is. That's not important. We gotta do this and do a couple little things. And then these knights are done. Now I am gonna work on that flag because we're gonna pretty it up, but we're not gonna do that on film. That's stupid. So 
we got to figure out what we're going to do next. And it's going to be working on the light on the light horse, guys. Working on the light horse for the Irish, the light horse commander. Aberdeen. I don't remember where the hell Aberdeen is. Aberdeen's in the south. I think. Stupid question. Let me look at the map. Man, I love maps. Aberdeen. Okay, Inverness is up there. Oh, Aberdeen's there. Interesting. Oh, you guys have front row tickets to those Viking bastards. Interesting. Okay, it's Glasgow and Edinburgh that are across the in the narrow spot. Okay. Got it. So I've got some guys to do. Um, I've got some guys to do as allies of this army that are these Scots Isles folks. Um, and these, I think these are based on the castings are based on the figures that um, are from the chessmen from um, the Isle of Lewis, I think is what it is. Which I think those chessmen are really cute. Uh, I like that. Uh, I like how they look a lot, biting their shields and that kind of stuff. But this figure is obviously based on on them. So we'll have uh, we'll be doing three stands of these guys to help bolster the the Irish up. We got lots of people to come visit these Irish and uh, you know uh, give them some combat advice. Seems like you know so. Uh, and Normans didn't get as far as Scotland. They did influence the culture, though. Okay. Yeah, the, where, where are those cavalry? Let's see. Jokers, I know you're here somewhere. Maybe I'm. Maybe I've already moved them somewhere else. This them over here. Nope. Oh well, I did an unboxing on them, and I, I liked how they looked a lot. So. Oh well. I gotta find my sheep today, as we're getting closer and closer each day of. Working on the camp. So. Okay. Horse. Aberdeen being where it is, I bet it's windy as hell there. I bet it's windy as hell everywhere in Scotland. Which, uh, living in a place that has no wind and is landlocked and is humid and hot, I welcome the wind. So, um, there's no damn wind here. Scott's Isles Army, mixture of Irish and Viking culture. In those days, the sea was the motorway of the time. Okay. 
Yeah, um, the thing that surprises me that I've seen about many pictures of Scotland, I'm sure there's there's some places that are different, but it's like devoid of trees. It's very tundra-ish, a lot of it. I guess maybe I'm I'm maybe I'm thinking when I looked at the stuff in the aisles because I did look at the aisles. You know, I'm fascinated. I spent a lot of time on Google Earth. Um, I use Google Earth a lot for work, and um, and uh, I've caught a glimpse of the aisles. You know, when I was reading about these guys, I'm like what what is out there? there? Well, there ain't a damn tree there. That's for sure. I don't know if there was just never any there, or Iceland's the other place it has no freaking trees in Iceland. Um. Which is strange because I live from a place that, you know, if we don't cut the trees down, they'll take over. <laughs> the trees and vegetation will just eat you alive. Um, yeah, so it's really strange seeing a place that's very um, tundra-like. Aberdeen may not be that way, but um, the, the aisles certainly, the pictures that I've seen of the aisles certainly are. Um, it's very different, you know, than what I'm used to. Yeah, those Lewis Chessmen, those guys are so cute. But we're going to have fun with them. Um, because even though the stuff isn't in full color... There's lots of different variations on etchings of the patterns on their shields. So um, we're going to have fun with that. We're going to make those guys shine. So that's, uh, we'll be doing them before you move on to another army. Well, they technically, it technically is moving into another army, but we'll do them before we start working on our next army project. So let's, um, we need to do some, um, man, I'm forgetting my words. The things you put your feet in <laughs> you're riding the horse. Stirrups. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, balmy 18 Celsius today, surrounded by wind farms. <sighs> I got to look. I got to look up what 19 Celsius is. I don't remember what it is. I know that it's West Coast Isles and Orkney Shetland Islands do not have many trees. Yeah. Yeah, barren. I'll be honest with you. I like the metric system. I understand how it works. But it's hard for us that are not familiar with it to visualize um, the temperature of things or temperature is very hard for me. Um, liquid's also very hard and, and a lot of it has to do with, um, it's not very hard, but it's, it's a visualization thing. Um, the meat, here's, here's my meter metric diatribe. I like I don't like the, the empirical system because of the whole partitions of an inch. It's just retarded to the max. That whole 18th or 3 16 or 7 64th is just moronic. Um, and, um, and what I work in is in construction. It's like, well, that's never going to go away. So um, it needs to be some kind of decimal something or another. The problem with the meter is it's, it is... It's too big a unit for being the, the, the base unit of something, okay? So something that is about 39 inches long is too big to be your one thing. And the reason for that is there's too many things that we have that we interact with in daily life it's too big from a standpoint of visualizing how large something is when you're given a unit, okay? There's lots of things that you interact with that you describe the size of that is smaller than 39 inches. And in doing so, you get a number that's very large. So, so you're talking about something that's um, 750 millimeters. You think, oh, it's massive. No, it's not. It's only about you know 30 inches long. 
Um, so there's lots of things that are in between. I think that a, a, a 12 inch unit is a much better one um, item as your base unit of measure that uh, then is something that's three times bigger. I'm not knocking the meter, I'm, I, you know, but I'm just, that's, that's the problem with many people in the U.S. in visualizing the size of things. It's not when somebody says, oh, well, that's four kilometers away. That's fine. It's not when something says, well, that's this many meters away. That's, that's fine. It's when you're talking about you're describing things of 20 inch length or, and it gets done in, in millimeters and it sounds like it's a really large item because it's a lot of millimeters and it isn't. That makes sense. I don't even know how we got on that, but uh, I'm not metric unfriendly. I like the decimal system, anything decimal. I'm like, that's the way to go without a doubt. Uh, I don't have a problem with the, with the metric system at all. Um, temperature. I just don't have enough exposure to it to, um, to say, oh, 19, 19 degrees Celsius, that's 72 or 70 or 68 or 65. I have a feeling it's somewhere in there, in that zone. So, um, so the fact that zero is freezing and, and the boiling is what, 100? Um, 66 degrees, okay. Yeah, see, I don't have that correlation yet if you tell me in kilometers i can do a quick conversion in my head and visualize how many miles away it is it's relatively easy but the the temperature is much more difficult now if i'd been exposed to it a lot more um talking about it then yeah i could visualize it but um i don't know i don't think it'll ever catch on here and um i don't know I'm not necessarily opposed to it, um, but I can't really be the only person using it. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, and then it's the same kind of problem with um, okay, so you have a visualization thing too. Or how about uh, weight? How about that stone thing? What is it? One stone's 14 pounds? Is that something like that? Uh, kilograms are fine. I have no problem with kilograms. Kilograms are cool. It's a visualization thing. I mean, it makes sense to do the, the the decimal thing. This partitions of a, and the liquids. Like I can visualize what a gallon is, but and liters as well is fine. But once you start getting into milliliters, it's the same thing. Okay, this is, you know, nine hundred milliliters. It's like, oh, that's huge. Well, no, it's just short of a liter. Like what? You know, it's just it's the same type of thing. Um, I like that it's metric. It, everything should have been met. I always think that they should have converted everything to um, engineering scale. So you've got um, per, uh, decimal feet. So you keep the feet and you divide the feet into 100 or 10s or whatever. But dividing it into 12 and then that into 12 and then something else into 12 is like, wow. I just, no. But, oh well. Not really a rant, just an observation from the outside. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Somebody should have consulted Napoleon should have wasn't Napoleon the one that pushed that through is it all uh, old uh Boney's fault, or is that just an urban legend? But um, it makes sense to do decimal. Anything else is just things are so much easier when they're decimal. Even time, if time had been decimal, that's not going to change time, please. Uh, enough people would already late to work as it is. Decimal just makes sense. Um, my background for gaming was playing decimal games, games that play that use the percentile dice. That was kind of the standard, and that's my go-to. Now this is you know, I first discovered this game. I'm like, what do you mean he uses one die six? That's stupid. 
there's not enough uh, there's not enough uh, options. Now I've just kind of just accepted it and I don't give it a second thought. But initially I was like, what? A D6? What are you playing? Risk? You know? That's too basic. I just kind of accepted it and I'm okay with it now. But my background is playing percentile based dice uh, games because it's really easy to translate into what's your chance of hitting something. I mean, I think in percentages, you know, all the time. So. Harvey Gernt. Uh oh. You're a the German in not Germany. Greetings. How are you, Harvey? I can work conceptualized meters to feet, no problem, but someone's weight in pounds defeats me. I have to work it back to stones. Really? Is stones 14, right? Stones is 14, um, 14 pounds is, is a stone, I think. It's whatever you're used to. It's just some things just aren't worth trying to It'd be like if all of a sudden they said, okay, we all have to eat with our left hands. I'd be screwed. I, I wouldn't eat a lot. There's my diet plan. Maybe that's my new diet plan. You want to lose weight? You only eat with their left hand. <laughs> I'm extremely right hand dominant. So, uh, you know, some things you've done your whole life are not worth uh, going and changing. So... Stone. I think stone stone is only a UK thing, right? It's only I'm fine with a metric system. You know what I'm not good with? Time to piss off people overseas. I am not good with you guys driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> and here's the problem. You ready for this? It's not actually driving on the wrong side of the road. Um, the problem is, um, let's say I went to, um, let's say I went over to Europe or I went to the UK or I went to Jamaica and it's time to rent a car, right? Because, you know, I'm American. We like to drive everywhere where we damn well please. <laughs> That's how we are. It's built in, in our culture. Um, I can drive a stick shift. I enjoy driving a sh stick shift a lot. I miss it. Um, uh, but a car with a stick shift that has the steering wheel on the right hand side has the stick shift still in the middle. So now I'm having to shift with my left hand to no, that's I'm, things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. They're not going to be good things. <laughs> If you could make me a stick shift car that the stick is still on the right, then we'd be okay. <laughs> you know, you're going to you're going to be in one of those situations where you're going to get to a roundabout and you're going to go the wrong way and you're going to cause an accident. So, yeah, if I go to if I go somewhere in the UK, I, I don't think I'll drive. I think I'll forego that. So, um Jeffrey says, I grew up at a time when the UK was expected to change to metric. We were taught in metric and the currency changed from the Roman to the decimal. But imperial measures were and are in general use. Currency. Roman to decimal. Oh, is that because... Um, Oh, that's before my time. Okay, so you guys have always had pounds sterling, but divisions of pounds sterling didn't used to be by 100. I guess you guys had, is it shillings? That were, I guess it's kind of like the same division as uh, like liquid is, that you've got um, a gallon is two half gallons. A half of a half gallon is, a, what, a pint? Something like that, and that, you know, where it's not proportional. I think that's maybe, maybe what it is. Um, 
Harvey, yes, 14 pounds is a stone. How did I know that? Um, something I've never used. I guess it's the same thing when you talk about, you know, that whole score. A score of something is also 14. Uh, 16 stone is a big fella, salad dodger. But 224 pounds has me reaching for a calculator. Wait a second. Did you just call me a salad dodger? <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna do something I don't have to. I can't do it. I got my. I'm, I'm talking through my calculator here. Four, two, six, six, one. Oh my God, I'm bigger than a salad dodger. <laughs> and I don't dodge salads. I have salads every day for lunch. Well, you know, we're all fat Americans, right? Yeah. Problem is, is portion control for me. I can eat healthy things. I just don't want to eat those damn European meals like you guys do. You know, like, this is a big plate of food for you guys. No, not this guy. I like to eat. But I do eat salads every day for lunch. True story. So, um, I eat healthy. The problem is, is I eat too much of everything. So, you know. Twelve pennies to a shilling. And 20 shillings to a pound. Oh my God. 21 shillings to a, no wonder. Yeah, no, that's, no, no, no. That makes me want to declare independence from you guys again. <laughs> no, I'm not to blame for that one. My ancestors weren't here yet. <laughs> nope. We're not responsible for that. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see, we gotta do a little uh, saddle action here. And BMI is just an indicator that you're too short for your weight. Well, I'm five foot ten. Five foot eleven was five foot eleven. You know, we're all shrinking. Anybody watching this channel certainly shrinking in the height department. Um, my dad was five foot four. My mom was five foot. I think I did pretty good. So, um, of someone who's of average height in this country, I think the UK is probably the same as the. US. All the tall people are aware. Netherlands, I think, is the Netherlands holds the the tall people record. When I see somebody shorter than me, I you know, I am kind of right in the middle, so I don't usually go places and feel short. So BMI, yeah, I'm I'm way over. All Americans are according to BMI, we're all obese. So once we once we pass 35 years old, yeah, we're all obese. Especially people who are true gamers. I guess that makes me, back to your question, I, I'm a painter, not a gamer, because the gamers are really out of shape and obese, and they'll, come, they'll go to a show and, and complain about walking across a highway that it's too far, and you know, I don't complain about walking. Walking is just walking. It's used, you're used to carrying your own weight, you know, all the time, so... Um, I don't complain about walking. I may complain about being out in this weather that's atrociously hot, but uh, when the weather's cool, I can walk forever. It doesn't bother me any. Yeah, according to my height, I'm supposed to weigh 152 pounds, 153 pounds or something like that. I'd have to be an AIDS victim to weigh that much, okay? <laughs> There's just no way you're getting me down to that, that kind of weight. No. I get under 180. I don't look well. So, um, Just don't exercise. We just don't exercise enough. We don't do, you know, 
Look what I'm doing instead of exercising. Maybe I should do that. I should do a uh, a, a podcast where I'm uh, I'm doing my walk in the morning. We talk about painting. What'd you do today? I painted figures and talked about how fat I was. I'm a guy. Guys don't care. In this country, guys don't care. I don't know how it is in other countries. I can't speak for them, but guys, guys don't care. Um, same thing. Man, you got some gray hair. I've had gray hair since I was 26. Do I have a lot of gray hair? Yeah, not really that much, but guys don't care about gray hair. Chicks dig that. Not that big a deal. The biggest problem with gray hair, true story, is um, maybe I should look into it. I always like get these ideas. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna look into you know why I feel beer more than tequila. I'd look that one up as well. Didn't make any sense to me. You wanna get me trash? Give me some beer, regular alcohol. Scotch, anything like that, whiskey, pfft, I'm fine. Beer, forget it. I have two beers, I'm, I'm three sheets to the wind, so to speak. You know, let's just say I feel it a lot more. But um, gray hair. So when you're in need of a haircut, not now, I got one yesterday, but it's, it turns into like a different material and it behaves almost like fishing line. So um, it's a pain when you'll have like... Um, you have like a little strand of gray hair that just kind of comes up and is is almost uh, plastic like that doesn't want to stay on your head where you want it to be. So that's really strange how it, it just behaves totally different. But color wise, man, I don't care. I don't have that much, and uh, not really an issue. How do you get stuck to that gray hair? <laughs> Height and weight I see in feet and pounds. Distance, I'm okay with both. I'm okay with both as well. A meter, a yard in my mind. Yeah, yeah, I see them both. So I do a lot of books on Audible. Okay, I'm obviously not doing it right now but because I'd rather do this than listen to books on Audible. Um, and I've two books. I'm a, I'm a naval war junkie, or I used to be. That's what I first started gaming. So I couldn't play a simple game like this or an abstracted game like this if it was like World War One or World War Two stuff. And that's what I'm talking about, Naval Junkie. I'm talking about World War One, um, World War II, um, Naval. And I'm not interested in the American crap. So I'm interested in the stuff that happened over there by Aberdeen. That's that's what it's all about. That in the Mediterranean. I like, I like those theaters. So um, I've read, I've had a couple of books read to me recently. One of them was um, the Kaiser's, Kaiser's Pirates, which is an excellent book. And the other one is a Jutland book. You know, both of these are things I already know about, but just go into more depth while I'm driving to and from work. Um, both of them, and the other one was a Jutland book written by the grandson of Jellico. Uh, they were both very good books. And both of them um, made me... I learned new things more. I, I, I enriched the, the stuff that I already knew. And, um, that's what I like to read about history. Like you'll know this and you'll know this, but you don't really know the details of what happened between. So reading those in-depth things allows you to fill in the blanks. So you have a, a better understanding of how you got from point A to point B. Um, that's what I enjoy anyways. But, um, both Jellicoe's book and the and the Kaiser's Pirate, especially Jellicoe's book, they would talk about the distance that, say, ships were firing at each other. And he would say, and literally would be, okay, and then Lion opened up on Derflinger at a range of 25,600 yards, 
23,200 meters. So every time it would describe it in yards and it would turn around, the next thing it would say would be the same distance in meters. And it was exhausting to listen to. And it was extremely awkward. It's like, okay, they're almost the same damn thing. Pick one and stick with it. Um, meters and yards are damn near the same distance. Uh, there's no reason to translate and there's no no reason that someone can't differentiate between the two. And it was just exhausting to, to, to listen to that um, over and over and over and over again. So great books other than that. So meters yard, pick one. I don't care. I prefer meters between the two. Um, but um, yeah. Yeah, I convert in my head, but you know what I end up converting in my head to? When I'm listening to stuff like that, I convert it into the game scale of the, of the naval game that we used to play so I could visualize how far it would be on the tabletop. <laughs> when I hear something like that, okay, that would be, that would be this many nautical miles, so it would be this many inches on the, uh, on the, uh, on the game scale. <laughs> convert it to uh, war game. Okay, so we've got these three knights, and I need to see if there's any final things I want to. Oh, well, they're not on screen. That would help, wouldn't it? Let's get our little. Um, let's get the cushion. C cushion missing the. I, I cut out a chunk with an exacto knife to see if I was going to. Um, uh, uh, to use this for some kind of um, dry brushing to like do like stippling or something. I never did anything with it, but now I've got this annoying gouge cut out of this. So. I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm gonna I'm going to pull out some more white and try to add a little bit more oomph to, to Eddie's tapestry stuff and see if we can't um, add a little bit more depth to it. And it may not work, but give it, a, give it an English try, right? Give it an old English try. Love John Campbell's Jutland, Analysis of the Fighting. Do I have that book? I bet I do. What's this one? Oh, this book. <laughs> I don't think I've ever opened it. And the reason I didn't open it is because... Um, I got it and I stopped doing naval war gaming. But I bet if I was doing scenarios, I would probably do it. So in reading and having, uh, oh, and the other book that I also did, did naval is Castles of Steel. I didn't read Dreadnought because Dreadnought's not, not available on Audible, but Audible allows me to actually get through books instead of an actual book, an actual physical book that put, puts me to sleep. It's too relaxing. It's not that I'm gonna enjoy reading or, or that can't read, but my eyes get tired and, and, and I fall asleep. And I also can't do something else while I'm, uh, while I'm reading. If I was listening to a book on Audible, I could be painting, you know, I could be driving. So, um, yeah, so one thing that surprised me about uh, Jutland is that there's not more war gaming based on the night action. Cause man, that, that would make some really interesting, interesting combat stuff. But I think part of it is because there would, you wouldn't be able to figure out what the damage, damage status of some of the high seas fleet ships were in. Because the, the British were pretty much undamaged at night. I mean, the whole Grand Fleet was pretty much undamaged with the exception of the 5th Battle Squadron and, um, and obviously the battle cruisers. And to varying degrees, some of the lighter ships, but the, the big ships were pretty much undamaged. So um, that would be easy to do from their, their standpoint, but uh, I always thought that would be really cool because pretty much anything goes. Aha, battleships, now we're talking. Yes, I'm fascinated by battleships and naval gaming too. 
Uh, I guess Campbell's and Elsa's Fighting is Superb, well worth the read. I've, I've never read it. I've, I've never read it. Um, maybe, maybe I'll read it if I go back into doing... And that's the thing. I'm a rivet head. So, like, all that stuff of armor and, and this places and gets hit and this ship. I mean, I can visualize what all the ships look like. I mean, we, we did a lot of naval war gaming, a lot. We used to use a really detailed rule set, too. So, it's, uh, not, it's not like I'm using uh, something very, um, very abstract. It's very, it's not DBA. All of my gaming before DBA is not abstract at all. So, you'll get to learn real facts while you're gaming. Um, so, I did a lot more World War II than World War One. The problem with World War One is that you don't have any of the fun paint schemes you have. Uh, most ships are painted kind of the same for both sides for most of the war. And when you do get painted different, they do something like um, paint the funnel in red or something like that on one of the German battle cruisers that just looks wrong. That's one. Of, that's one of those things that I think I, somebody mentioned to me that or we were talk, got on the subject of sometimes I change things because they don't seem right. That's one of those. I'm never gonna paint uh, Sadlitz with a, with, a, um, with a red funnel or something like that. I'm just not gonna do it. It just, that just seems so wrong. Um, oh yeah, I was talking about putting the, um, if you're building like a, um, a World War II British um, Northwest Europe unit and um, and painting an American star on the roof of a British tank. I'm just not gonna do it. I don't care if they did it or not, it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't seem like you guys are uh, uh, getting your, the right kind of recognition for your own country kind of thing, you know? It's, uh, I don't know. Most of the time I try to stick to to what things are, but sometimes they just don't make any sense. They just they just look wrong, so. We yeah, have all the gaming, the, all the naval gaming. I was big into the European stuff, you know. Aircraft carriers ruin everything. You know, and I'm already, I mentioned it before, I don't know if you guys have heard me, I don't like playing Americans. I'm already American and we're kind of a smorgasbord of everything, so it's not it's not that exciting from a gaming standpoint. It's more exciting to to play something that's not so homogenized. Um, at least in my viewpoint, if I lived in Europe, maybe I thought I would feel different, but I, I don't enjoy playing American stuff. That doesn't mean I want to live somewhere else. I'm just saying, you know, from a gaming standpoint. See me game game in American wars. I don't think they're very interesting, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, I love the World War II naval stuff. Love it. Love playing British World War II destroyers. Love them. And British ships have the best freaking names ever. In my opinion. Access to recent publications, Hipper's Scouting Force repainting the second funnel on each ship 
Resorte as a recognition aid. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Doesn't seem right. Oh, so I was reading one of those things. I had never heard of um, the nickname they had for, for Durflinger. Is like, or is like we used to call it. We used to call it Dirtflinger. Not because we can't pronounce German things, just because uh, it kind of sounds like that. Um, we played in a, a Jutland game one time, and we had this one guy we talked into. Sometimes you talk into people playing historical stuff who aren't historical gamers, and it kind of backfires. Here's an example. So we gave this guy a, a, ba a German battle cruiser, yeah, uh, the Von der Tan. The whole time he was calling it the Van der Camps, which is a brand of like baked beans the whole time. So yeah, that's that's wrong. Although sometimes I, I can admit that uh, I am, I do the same thing. The British light cruiser, Birmingham. Did I say that right? Uh, I used to call it Bur Burningham, probably because I got a fire on it one time and it just kind of went with a thing. So. Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. This is kind of. Uh, I think we're okay. I think. I think I'm good with. You know what? Let's. Uh, let's. Let's brighten up. Let's make sure these. This white is really. It, it'll look different when it's. Uh, when we put the varnish on there. It'll bring everything to life. Um, so yeah, for the most part, I was a World War II gamer. That's what I... Uh, I picked up a series of books in, in, in junior high. I don't remember what they were. They didn't have any pictures in them. I remember that. I think they didn't have any pictures in them. And they were bound in a very basic manner, but uh, they were all multi-part on Battle of the Atlantic, and they weren't the Time Life books or any of those, or any of the Ballantine ones, none of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I grew up with those and got fascinated into World War II, and I just thought that uh, it was the it was the perfect combination of brute force and uh, technology. So, um, and uh, yeah. Okay, not that we're gonna stop painting, but I wanna get this out of the way. So this is what these guys are gonna look like um, a little later on before we go and do the, do uh, the things that we need to do today that aren't gaming related. I will spray these guys and uh, so we can start uh, putting them on their stands. So this is the three Scottish Knights. We've got uh, uh, Edward de Bruce. What was this guy's name again? And the two Johnnies. <laughs> this is uh, Sir John de Sully and uh, Sir John Stewart. So, anyhow, you guys can go hang out here over in the waiting room. Now, what time is it? Eight o'clock? Yeah, we still got more painting in us. Well, I've got more painting in me. Just off the break off and I think I got a breakfast date with a daughter. So we're gonna go out for breakfast, so. Um, Irish light horse. So we started on this guy and we didn't finish this one because um, I don't know how tall to make his, his, his pole for the flag because I don't know what size the flag is going to be. So I'm kind of at a standstill. Let's, uh, so let's work on the... Um, Let's work on the general. Now, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I'm gonna paint a piebald horse. I think that's what, that's, I think that's how you pronounce it. Piebald, a bald pie. So, I probably don't need to be doing that without a picture reference. I don't, can't pull one off of my phone. So let's see if we can um, dance around the problem and leave that for last. So let's, uh, we can do some uh... you know what I can I can go back and work I can work on this guy I can work on this dude 
Uh, there's enough stuff I can do with them, like the flesh and stuff. Let's go flesh this guy out. The naval war gaming that I think would be really interesting to do. Um, I need to write this stuff down when I think about it. Um, would be the pre World War One stuff, like the stuff that almost was that never was. The problem with it is a lot of those old ships were always painted the same way, depending even from different nations. And you're talking about the almost off white. Uh, the very light gray hull with the uh, ochre funnels and God, I hate that look. It just looks terrible on everything, in my opinion. Um, so if I was going to paint that stuff, I'd have to, I'd have to spin it a little different. You know, you can't have five different nations and they all paint their ships the same. Uh, it just doesn't look right, even if they really did that in real life. So uh, it's one of those things where I'd have to take the. Uh, my artistic license and um, not get crazy but you know be flexible with it um, yeah the pre-dreadnought stuff because of because of the ranges of things so okay does this guy have a shirt on I know he's got um, he's gonna have leggings Let's, um, let's paint. Let's see what we got here. Let's get some of the, my favorite paints here. Coke de Orange. I know these are from the UK. Does it say where they're from in the UK? They are not manufactured by HMG Paints Limited. Man, I love Coke de Orange. I only have a handful of them. I got like four or five of them. There's nowhere here I can just walk in and grab them. So I think these are the same people that that made um, the original uh, Games Workshop paints. And I believe, I could be wrong, that they're those same ones that manufacture the foundry system paints. Um, if you guys know, let me know because I might pick up some foundry triad stuff. Not to paint in a triad method. Um, but... Um, I may do that next um, they have them at Historicon somebody carries uh, boundary paints at Historicon and these last a really long time even though you still end up getting even though you still end up getting this um, this ring around the paint bottle thing here Yeah, that's where your paint wastage goes. Okay, there's some here. I don't think there is. I don't think I've ever done that before on this bottle. This is a Russian green, I believe. Russian brown, sorry. This would be like a Russian uniform color for World War II, so. And if you're talking about like infantry stuff, like land combat, Eastern Front is what I want to do. And you got, which bad guy do you want to play for? So. Pre-Dreadnoughts is intriguing. Smaller ranges. I've played some Russia-Japanese encounters using the old Skytrex rules. I didn't even know Skytrex made rules. Didn't know that. 
I'm familiar with Skytrax. They used to make uh, all my uh, all of my um, land World War II stuff is in 20 mil. Yes, I'm the one person in the United States that likes 20 millimeter for for uh, skirmish gaming. Yeah, I love I love I love my 20 mils. I like the 20 mils because I discovered some figures that I used to love, and they're by my favorite sculptor ever. Ever, ever, ever. Probably will never have a more favorite sculptor than this guy. Uh, the late Dave Alsa. I loved his work, and he did the whole combat range of, of World War II figures in 20 millimeter scale. He did other things as well, but that's what I know him as. I believe they were marketed as Hotspur before. Uh, they turned into combat, but I came across them as being combat combat miniatures. And, uh, love those figures. Love the sculpted bond. Stole my favorite figures ever in any scale. So. And he's from the UK, of course. It's the UK. It's land of toys. That's where all the stuff comes from. That's where all the stuff I want comes from. These are QRF figures, by the way. So we're going to take this off green type color. I'm not going to go crazy with the green. But we do want some, some green on this Irish army, even though it really wasn't a thing at the time. It's not going to be very green anyways. Kind of a drab color. Right, let's bring this up. Man, I'm thirsty. I need to get some water. I'll be right back, folks. Because I'm out of coffee. I don't think I need any more coffee. I think I think we're good with that. I'll be right back. Okay. What I miss? Nothing. Okay. Let's 
sun. It's lunchtime in Europe. Is it tea time? Is there a certain time of the day that's tea time? I don't mind tea. I just don't like drinking anything hot. I'm already too warm on the inside. Us big fellas get warm. <laughs> oh man. Saw a picture earlier that this oh do a little bit more of that. There we go. This um whatever this thing is, it's like a, a mat or something like that that's underneath this cushion that they used to ride on. I guess they had hemorrhoids to prevent hemorrhoids. <laughs> Was um, all one, all the same color on a piece of artwork that I saw. So that's why I didn't have a whole lot of doubt as to how I was going to paint this particular folk, this particular person. I just jumped right on this green and went to town. So. I had a friend of mine who also has a YouTube channel. He's got a few less viewers, but he's got a, I, I suspect he's probably going to grow faster than I will because he's involved in all kinds of different stuff. He buys things constantly. It's unnerving. You know, I don't like throwing money at the problem. I like to enjoy what I have and, and feel like I use enjoy what I have and, 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 you know, there's no point in buying stuff if you're not getting your money's worth out of stuff. Does that make me frugal? No, I've just bought a lot of things in the past and not done anything with it and felt bad about it. And, um, you know, we've all had a lack of money in the past. You know, we're younger, what have you. So I don't want to get in. I, I appreciate things and but anyhow, he's involved in all kinds of different games, fantasy, uh, historical board games. And he, he posted the other day about how he was excited that in the last month he has gotten more female viewers on his channel than male viewers. So I sent him my demographics and my demographics are for the most part, people that are 10 years older than I am from the UK. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys fall in that category. <laughs> I'm 49, so. Um, but at the same time, you, you two have some real, really interesting stats. It'll show you, you know, where, what country most people, what country the viewers are from, what percentage are from each one, the age group. Um, what the average watch time is. And, you know, most of my viewers are from the UK and they, the people from UK have a longer watch time than the people from the US. I guess people get distracted here easy, you know. But uh, thank you folks from the UK. I appreciate you.
can't come visit you guys with the current situation. We're supposed to go to Europe this this year, but that didn't happen. I don't know if we'll ever go at the rate we're going, but that's okay. We got uh, Google Mobile, so we can uh, pick a city street and just uh, travel down that street and pretend we're there. It's more important to have the whole internet thing going so we can have this kind of uh, interaction. It's more important than actually going there in person, to be honest with you. But um, the cushion. So we're going to put a cushion on this guy. All right, we're done with Mr. Uh, Coat the Orange Green. See, even my favorite paints come from England. Or the UK. I don't know where these are from. I suspect these are from England. Eleven Z's. Tea and a biscuit two hours ago. Eleven o'clock. That's lunchtime for me. My eating times are 5 a.m., 11, and as soon as I can get home. Um, that's my assigned eating times. So it's like a brunch then. My daughter likes hot tea and she actually had it with milk in it recently and I tried it. I had never tried uh, tea with milk in it. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't like hot tea, but I love Earl Grey. Oh, I love that English black tea. Oh yeah, that, that stuff tastes, that's taste wise, that stuff tastes good, but I don't want it warm. Cause it, you know, I'm already warm and, and hot. So, you know, you guys have 19 degrees Celsius. Our days lately have been near 40. So, and no wind and probably 30 at night. Uh, so I can't wait until winter time. I don't know why somebody came to this freaking place. This is like a swampy shithole. <laughs> nah, it's great in the winter time. But, um, afternoon tea, sometime after lunch and before supper, there's a word I never use. I never use supper. Um, I always use dinner as supper, but, uh, I know what you mean. Depending on whether you're having cake. Huh. Interesting. So what do you do when, you, uh, when you're when you in a workplace? Okay, so let's say you work uh, eight to five or whatever, you're at your workplace. Do you guys all break for tea? Do you break for tea in the afternoon and in the morning? Or it's just kind of, you don't get to do that when you're at work. I'm wondering how that works. All right. A cushion, so we need a buff colored cushion. Uh, there it is, I did put it down. And let's do brown with this one. Let's do, let's do brown with this cushion. But you know, I don't, I don't drink warm things. Coffee. I drink coffee every day. Do I drink hot coffee? Hell no. What the hell is wrong with you? It's way too hot. So I drink iced coffee. You know, I still drink it black. But it's, uh, you know, so would I drink tea? Sure, but it's got to be cold. I, you know. Is there places that sell like uh, English tea over there that, uh, that it's cold? I know, I'd probably get kicked out of your damn country. <laughs>
Good morning, Joe. You finally woke up. <laughs> if you haven't watched my videos, I think you were working on There's a lot of stuff to watch. My, um, let's bring you up to date. The Scottish Knights are done. They're not sealed, but they're done. So, anyhow, and uh, this morning we did uh, how to paint a really small lion on a shield. So, uh, anyhow, you get up to fifteen minutes. Get up to fifteen minutes in the morning and afternoon for a break. Still try to keep that routine when working at home. Used to have tea breaks, but eventually it was fetch your own beverage to your desk. Yes, you can buy bottles of cold lemon tea. Okay. Well, that's like American tea. That's uh, whatever that iced tea is. But uh, I meant like uh, like if you wanted to have like English breakfast tea or uh, Earl Grey. Is that available anywhere cold? I'd be down for that. That's uh, That stuff tastes good. Coffee doesn't taste good. I drink coffee a lot, but I drink it to get things done. I don't drink it because I love the taste of coffee. I love the smell of coffee. But... Um, Oh, what am I doing here? I'm talking faster than I'm painting. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> I'm flexible. We'll put that color in. We're just going to lighten it up anyways. I am uh, reading about World War II stuff. One of my favorite, one of my favorite theaters, no, my favorite theater that involves the Western Allies on the ground campaign is without a doubt the desert. No doubt about it. Uh, fun to war game. Both sides are very um, interesting. Both sides are very, um, well, I love the Mediterranean naval stuff, but um, Force H. Um, but I was surprised that even the British tankers would brew up tea on... I remember seeing pictures of them putting the kettle right on the freaking tank that was, you know, at near boiling temperatures and having tea that way. I'm like, I can't imagine having hot tea in the desert. Mind blown. So... I have tried cold lemon tea. I favor English breakfast tea. I can take it cold. I get chilled tea in the coffee shops. Okay, excellent. English breakfast tea is excellent. It tastes a hell of a lot better than coffee. Now, coffee just has that caffeine content that just, you know, wakes the dead. But taste-wise, yeah, English, bre English breakfast tea is excellent. Best thing that ever came from China, right? <laughs> Could be wrong. Might have come from India. I'm not sure where. I'm not sure where that comes from. Oh, they may grow it in England now. So yeah, little speaking of Scotland, Little Big Man Studios makes some Scottish flags. I want to say they're geared towards Saga. Man, they're gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. They got some stylized type crosses, and that's kind of like their main motif is on, on the ones that I saw. And they were just absolutely beautiful. So I'm like, okay. I can make an army with really pretty flags and some pretty shields, but then guys that are wearing like uh, really drab clothes, I, I could go for that. I just don't know if I'm gonna do them next. Um, Cause that army has, that army has a cavalry general, a light horse, six fast pikemen, two fast pikemen or fast war band, a solid war band and a Saloy or two. 
So the last, the other army that I have that has a fast pipe gun, is what I call my bamboo freight train, my Nan Chow. I love playing them. So, um, you know, I love bows. I love bows a lot, but I don't want to continually build armies that have bows because I want a mixture of things that are different. So, and playing armies that don't have any shooters are kind of fun for a change. So, but I do like shooting elements or missile launching elements. It'd be more appropriate. I, uh, Jeffrey, I don't know if you've got a heavy Scottish accent or not. You may not even know. You'd have to, might have to ask somebody else that's snuck from there. But there's this one guy who I follow on YouTube that does some really beautiful vehicles and, and 20 millimeter. And um, he has a very thick Scottish accent. So we we'll had an interesting experience. I put on subtitles and what the auto generated subtitles turned his, com what he was saying into was hilarious. I mean, it was stand-up comedy hilarious. So, um, that was really... But his, his accent is extremely thick. Extremely thick, so... The picks are great. Six fast pike, pre-feudal Scots are the natural evolution. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm not doing picks because uh, Mitch already has them. He beat me to them, bastard. Um, but if I was going to do them, I would probably do them from um, Forged in Battle. Their stuff looks amazing, and I don't have. I don't mind having a bunch of extra figures. You know, and they come in what twenty-four figure packs. So you only need 18 for the picks. Or, um, well, I guess if you build them all, you get exactly 24 figures. So, yeah. But I got I got to do tattoos on them, don't I? That's, that's, that's a problem. That would be a problem. That'd be a problem, like trying to relearn a lot. I've got pens and stuff. I guess I could, I could, could do that. I'd just be afraid of it not looking right or looking wrong. But... Yeah, they got to have tattoos, right? Because that's where the pic comes from. Pictures. So the Romans named those guys. Okay. Oh, we got to do the, the stuff around his... Um I got to look at some pictures for where I decide whether or not this guy's going to have hose or not. Let's look at the commander. I have to watch my accent when dealing with non-Scots on the phone. Okay, well that means you got a heavy accent. This guy can't understand anything at all. Now, I don't... I do any kind of TV watching at lunchtime. You know, and my lunch break on a work day. What I've been listening to lately is those talk shows between... Um, I'm not really a person that follows celebrities and stuff like that. But I could use a laugh um, during my work day. Let's put it that way. So I'll usually put on uh, either old reruns of Graham Norton, which is hilarious. 
and um, the talk show guy we had here, Craig Ferguson, who's, you guys would probably say he doesn't have much of a Scottish accent because he's very easy to understand. But uh, yeah, I'm usually listening to foreign stuff during, um, during, um, during my lunch break. But uh, as I know, there's people from, even in this country, there's people you can't understand. You know, we call those people Yankees. <laughs> yeah, it's very different to people that uh, from Alabama and New York. So I would imagine it would be very different from uh, other places. Let's see here. Um, shouldn't have put this away. So I like to be consistent with the, the strapping color there. Aberdeenshire is home to the Doric dialect. Aren't those the guys that built the columns in Greece? <laughs> it's a mashup of Old Scots, Old Norse, and English. Oh, that could be not. That could be a nightmare. That could be a nightmare. Wow. English accent. There's some that are so freaking easy to understand, and there's some that are just atrocious. So, um, forget the vocabulary. I mean, there's vocabulary differences between our languages, between both sides of the pond, but there's not that much. There's not. I I like to say I prefer. Um, American pronunciation, but I prefer English spelling. You know, as I like armor with a U in it and color with a U in it and all that stuff, so. But. There's some things that are difficult for me to, to, to listen to. One of them is I watch a history programming. A lot of history programming is done with an English accent. And they like, they like calling the successor empire to the Romans, the Byzantines. And it just, that's like nails on a chalkboard for me. I can't, I can't, I can't deal with that one. Uh, but that's probably the only thing. Everything else I'm okay with. But yeah, it varies a lot. We have a, um, I don't know if you guys listen to any audible stuff, but there's a guy that has a, a lot of, that does a lot of work on audible that, that when I listen to him, he, he's very prolific. Like he does all of the Polybius stuff and, uh, Livy and all those uh, ancient type texts. He, he does them all on there. And the, the problem with Audible is most of these texts, they only have one version of it. So if you don't like it, you may like the story, but you don't like the person that's um, that's narrating it, you're up a creek because that's the only game in town. And this happened with a couple of the books that I got from this particular narrator. His name is Charlton Griffin. And I'm listening to him like, what part of the UK is this guy from? He's not. He's some American in Oregon that has this fake haughty type accent. And he puts emphasis on the wrong words and mispronounces everything terribly. And 
it's so bad to listen to that I've just basically I've blacklisted him. I won't listen to anything that he he does, and it's a shame because he does a lot of things. But he did this uh, this book that I thought was particularly interesting by the history the called the Jewish War by Josephus, and it all talks about uh, King Herod and the Romans came in there all the way through um, Masada. I think is where it ends, and. Um, a couple of armies of that period I had an interest in doing. And I figured, oh, well, this would be a pretty good fit. And he narrates that book. And I've tried to listen to it three times. I just, I can't do it. I, I, he just, he finds new ways to pronounce words that have never been tried before. And is just, the meter on it is just terrible. So if you ever listen to Audible, I cannot recommend him. But the narrator has a huge part to do with your enjoyment of it. Um, you guys are probably familiar with Dan Jones, who does uh, many uh, books. His books are excellent. The one on the Plantagenets in particular is very interesting. Um, but the guy who they got the narrator on Audible is horrible. Um, he's bored. He needs some more English tea. Let's put it that way. He's... he's Bored to tears listening to it, and um, it makes a big difference because I have another one of his books that I got recently, the one on the Crusades, that Dan Jones narrated himself, and he's perfectly fine, but he got somebody else to narrate the book, and it's horrendous. It it it, it didn't ruin the book because I did listen to it, but it doesn't want me to listen to it a second time, so. Um, I remember Craig Ferguson, when he started out as a comedian, he used the alter ego Bing Hitler. Fit like men. How are you? Fit. How are you, my man? Bing Hitler. Okay, look that up. Bing Hitler. Yeah, his accent is not very strong. Now, Billy Connolly's accent is a lot stronger. Um, I need, I listen, I, I watch everything with subtitles anyways. I'm kind of hard of hearing. Um, I had an infections as a kid and um, it was what I've been told, I don't remember. So um, I hear everything. I just don't understand everything. So it's even more annoying. So I watch everything with subtitles because any programming I tend to watch is very complicated. I, I like backstabbing spies, people that are double crossing, that kind of stuff. So I, I need to, it's, it's easier to, to watch that stuff on there. Um, so yeah, Billy Connolly is much uh, stronger accent than, than Craig. Bing Hitler, I'll have to check that out. If they can, if they can find it, I'm sure there's a lot of Hitler stuff that's no longer on. Might offend some people. <laughs> I don't get offended by anything. I grew up in a different time when we could just make fun of our differences and get along at the end of the day. Well, you don't want to get along with Nazis, but you know, you know what I'm getting at. Um, you know, things have changed so much that if I was doing a World War II painting and I showed like pictures of Germans that I'm painting, you know, you're doing World War II, you got to paint Germans because, you know, it's their freaking fault, right? That it even happened. <laughs> but, you know, I'd have to like apologize or, you know, for them. You know, like people think I'm, I'm painting little German guys because I was some... German symp sympathizer. You know, when I grew up gaming, I was never a, you know, people never painted, Germans are extremely popular, but it's not because people are racist or uh, white power thing or something like that. They just had cool equipment and they had cool uniforms and they were involved in it a lot. That's, that's what I think, you know, um, you know, their, their vehicles and their, you know, that kind of stuff. Not because people want to be a Nazi. Um, 
Yeah, because you'll look, you'll, they'll come up with some new models for a company and they'll like, they'll release 12 models and 10 of them are German. So German stuff sells better. Um, and it might be because, you know, you can paint them in North Africa, the Panzer Dark Yellow scheme, the early gray, you know, you've got more um, variety in how you can go about it. But for people that don't know, they'd be like, oh, you're just building those guys because you're a racist. I'm like, come on, when did the world start? When did the world turn upside down? Oh, fit like men. How are you, my my man? So that's what it is in Doric. Fit like men. <laughs> Doric. Yeah, you say Doric. I'm like, oh, Doric columns. Sure. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I got to I got to make a decision whether this guy's a hoser or not. <laughs> uh, let me find my book and see if I can make a decision. I gotta remember that. Why do you paint Germans in World War II? Because those fuckers started it all. <laughs> oh, man. Where is my book? Where did it disappear to? tour of this room. It's it'd just be cool. Maybe somebody will find it interesting. I don't have that much stuff, but there it is. It was just upside down. Celtic Warriors by the artwork by Angus McBride. I suspect he's Scottish. Well he was the best freaking illustrator ever. So um Man, I love his stuff. I think we're going to split the difference. Okay? I think we'll make him bare-legged. But we'll make the main man have hoes. That'll help tie into the fact that the Irish don't know what a shoe is. <laughs> oh, man. I was watching a history program... Uh, recently, and I was surprised to find out that the Scots came from Ireland. In other words, they were in Ireland first, and they came over to Scotland and kind of colonized it that way. I would have thought it was the other way around, but, you know, again, this is something I've, I've never learned in any history that I've ever been taught, and, you know, I don't learn about history on a whim unless I'm building the army, so that's why I like historical gaming. You learn stuff just by, you know, Doing it now. He's got a shirt on. He's got a shirt. He's got a long sleeve shirt. All right, so let's do the flesh and we'll paint him bare legged. Let's get the old uh, Caucasian mix set here. Red leather. Sunny skin tone. Where are you, sunny skin tone? Still got black there? Yep. Okay. Red leather. You guys are awfully quiet. You must have fallen asleep at the wheel. <laughs> um, sp speaking of falling asleep at the wheel, I sometimes watch stuff like this while I'm driving. Well, I'm, I don't have to look at it, but, you know, listen to it. Absolutely. I like listening to talk. Um, hobby talk. Good morning from Utah. Painting early as usual, I see. Yes. 
on a weekend? Absolutely. Absolutely. Skylab, where in Utah do you live? I've been there twice. I went there the year after the Olympics in 2003 for a work-related thing and said, I got to come back to this place with, with the lady because it's just beautiful. And we didn't get to go there until 2000 and when did we go? I'm going to call it 2017. I may be off by a year. But South of Salt Lake City, little town of Pleasant Grove, nestled up to the side of Mount Tipanganos. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot of traveling other than, uh, you know, flew into Salt Lake City and then we spent uh, a week, a week, a week, a week or four days, five days. I don't know, a short week or a week in uh, Park City. So, and no, we didn't do any skiing because um, we're swimmers, not skiers. But we did do snowmobiling, some uh, tubing. Um, yeah. I think it was 2017. Approaching the solstice. You guys see that? Let me take this, this off. The solstice here. And I start seeing a shadow that comes in from the transom window. And uh, you had a fire scare last night. Uh-oh. Wildfire on the side of the mountain came to within about a quarter mile from our neighborhood. Holy shit. Wow. Wow. You guys got any wild critters on the, on the mountain? Well, I know that they there are wild critters there, but um, is that where I saw moose? I think I saw moose in Park City. Yeah, but I mean like uh, predators. You guys got cougars out there? I don't want to live anywhere there's predators moping around. Deer and occasional mountain lions walk through the neighborhood. Yeah, no. Nope. Nope. Um, I'd have to go. Uh, I'd have to go with my SEAL team. Everywhere we went. <laughs> yeah. The same thing about mountain lions is there's no point in being scared of them because they've seen you before you ever see them. So if they're coming for you, they've already got you before you can do anything about it. That's comforting. You know, we've got the, we've got the baby mountain lions here in Florida. I mean, I've never seen one until A year ago, last November, last November, I was coming back from Savannah, Georgia, through the the backwoods, and it had to be a, it had to be a, a panther. It had to be one because there's nothing that walks like that. It was at night, and all I saw was the eyes. And but you know, it wasn't a 
in the middle of nowhere. He was outside the normal zone because they're normally over, like, only over in the Everglades and the areas where nobody lives anyways. So, but yeah, I don't want to be at night encountering something of that size. I don't want to be somebody's tasty morsel. I got figures to paint. We are anxiously awaiting daylight here for the aerial firebombing to begin. Wouldn't it be easier to put down and put out out at night? It's self illuminating. <laughs> Unless it's smoldering, but, uh, yeah, uh, it's so moist here. You couldn't have a fire here. It's, uh, we've had rain every day for two months and lightning storms also. So I guess every place has crazy stuff. So. At night, it's too close to the mountainside. Okay, yeah, you don't want to slam into the mountain. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, out west it burns. Is that just a freak fire you have, or, or is Utah also on fire like Cal? Well, it's not on fire like California, but nothing's on fire like California. Except Australia. What was that, last year? Yeah, that was on fire like California. That was some crazy shit. That's some crazy, crazy shit. We actually had a house in our neighborhood. I live in a suburban neighborhood. And um, we actually had a house like four do doors down that actually caught fire. And they put the fire out before... Like the whole roof burnt. And I suspect, based on who owned it, it was a guy that um, was selling solar power hot water heaters. And uh, I suspect he was probably selling them under the table. But um, I suspect that it was a wiring issue that caused that to happen. Because, you know, electricity and voodoo, as far as I'm concerned, I, I wouldn't mess with electricity. Um, and this, you just don't hear about houses catching fire anymore. You know, I mean, they would from a wildfire, but I just mean on their own, you know, from a short or something like that. I'm sure that was the case. I'm starting to think that this guy's, this guy's legs are too fat. They're looking to, like you may have had hose on them. But I like the idea of him being bare-legged because, like the light cavalry, all the other light cavalry is completely bare-legged. They, they literally do not have any shoes on. So it makes sense for the guy that rides with the general of the army to also be bare-legged with shoes. And then the general can have hose and shoes. So you kind of have like a hierarchy thing there going on. So, Oh, we got Doggo to paint. I forgot all about doggo. Well, I'm not a dog person. Oh, well, I am a dog person, but I don't have one. Um, I prefer to watch them on YouTube. Then I don't have any. I don't have any pets. I got figures. I ain't got time for pets. Yeah, doggo. Doggo is going to be on the stand here too. We're going to have Irish Wolfhound. So um, he's going to run with the two with the two. Figures. So you'll have the the night the uh, light horse general will look a little bit. We'll have two light horse on it, like a normal light horse stand, but it'll also have a, a dog on there as well. So three fires in my county right now. Wow. They say. I read somewhere that Utah is the place that has the least amount of lightning in the U.S. Um, that'd be a pretty damn good reason to live there. It's 
I detest lightning. Um, I think I did that one time. It was lightning so bad. I looked up on the internet. Who, which place has the least amount of lightning? And it caught my attention. It was Utah. I'm like, oh. Been there. Yep. We'll probably go back to Utah at some point, but I don't think I want to go in the summertime. The whole point is to see snow. We don't have that here. So it's beautiful. And if you go on vacation, you know what that means? You don't have to shovel it. Somebody else can do that. So. I had not heard that about lightning. We get a certain amount, but we don't get much in the way of storms during the summer. You guys have those winter storms. Yeah, beautiful country out there. The time I went in 2003, there was that whole business when we were in Salt Lake and we wanted to go to a bar and we had to buy a, we had to buy like a membership in the club so they would serve us alcohol. It was really, really weird. I was like, what? But I was expecting to see that again and when we went in 2008. I want to say it was 2018 because last year we went to Colorado. So it was a year before that. We started doing spring break trips as well. So, um, yeah, it was 2018. And, uh, you know, that was... I don't know if that was just a Salt Lake City thing or... Um, that was weird. I don't... I don't drink very much, and so I don't appreciate restrictions on my alcohol consumption. I value my freedom. I don't like being told what to do. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that like, you know, the laws weren't made for me. I know how to behave in public, so I don't like being told what to do <laughs> because I'm not going to misbehave. It's just kind of the principle of it, you know? Leave me alone. We'll get along better that way. <laughs> Yeah, I don't drink that much. I uh, I like to talk about it a lot more than actually doing it, so. And like I like to say, it's like, if I can't drink at work, I really don't need to drink on my, uh, when I'm not at work. <laughs> and since I can't drink at work, then it's not really that important. We claim that Utah has 10 months of winter and two months of really poor skiing. Well, when I went to Utah, I noticed that it wasn't as dry as Colorado was. Colorado was dreadfully dry. And we're talking in the winter time, so. Well, I'm going to paint this guy up and then when this, whenever this, get this flag situation figured out, I may just have to repaint some of his hand and that's okay. No big deal. It's not like I can't get the right color ever again, you know. Sol the solstice nears. Yeah, it only lasts for about 15 minutes, but it's like the sun comes right in that transom window and, you know, 
and you get like double light source. So you get the light source that you have to have here anyways, and you get the other one that's casting some major shadows and it, it's, a, it's a little disorienting. Paint like he's got a kneecap, even though he doesn't have one. That's why he rides a horse, right? Was that place we went to in Utah? Old West Distillery. Yeah, it's funny finding some of their stuff here at um, at the liquor store here in town. I'm like I've been there, had some of that stuff there too. Oh, what a jackass! I've been doing the hands and the feet. I've forgotten all about the face. Well, time to bring the uh, face back into it. No big deal. Easy fix. Okay, if you ever do revisit Utah, you should check out Gaho. That's how I would say it. Gaho Games Store in Sandy near Salt Lake City. Fantastic war game store. Okay. Cool. Could be Gajo. That sounds like it's a Spanish word, so I would pronounce it gajo. Of course, I don't think there's too many Spanish name places in Utah. My ancestors gave up looking for gold there. They just said, nah, and in, in Colorado either, screw that, we're leaving. Didn't bother in Utah. <laughs> the original gold diggers. <laughs> uh. Oh, this guy doesn't have, a... damn it, this guy doesn't have anything at all. All right, I'll start from scratch on this guy. This guy's gonna have a beard though. I can't really tell on this casting whether he has a beard or not. Well, that's not a very good sign. But well, we gotta do something about his kneecap. This guy's got the world's largest kneecap. Let's fix that. I'm telling you, this stuff is it's very forgiving. You screw up here, it's like, oh, I can fix this. No problem. I got this. All right. Yeah, I can't tell if this guy's got a beard or not, but he will now. He looks like he's got a goatee. Oh, he looks like a conquistador. Mm. Yeah. That's what we're going to roll with. Uh, okay, more of this and this.
<sighs> what happened? Did we get a cloud? I guess we got a cloud. I was teasing about the solstice and then we didn't get one. What? See if we get a chance to do yard work today. It rained so much yesterday, I didn't get a chance to do that. So I'm gonna get that done on the weekends because there's no time after work really to get that done Monday through Friday, so. Okay, add some more of this. Used to live in Florida. Where did you used to live in Florida? There's all kinds of Florida here. We really big penis shaped state. Tampa, Fort Myers, and Sarasota. Okay. We go to Fort Myers every year on 4th of July for the beach. The beach is stellar down there. Stellar. We've gone the last four or five years now for 4th of July. about four hours away from us, four and a half hours away. Not too bad. Okay. Ooh, man. Hum. You give up coffee, you start yawning. Nah, I was yawning even when I was drinking the coffee. So. Best beaches in the state are on the Gulf side. I agree with you. Well, I haven't been in the peninsula, but uh, I haven't been up in the, the Panhandle. But the Panhandle road net to get there is horrible. Um, the the thing about it is, is that the, I like the idea of the Atlantic. It's, I like the idea of 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 that being better, but it isn't. Um, the sand isn't as good. There's a lot of uh, uh, cross current so you go in at one place and then when you come back out you're like a 500 yards down <laughs> <It's already laughs> um, yeah yeah I wish I lived closer to the beach so we'd go to it more often but because it's good for me but um, but what we're at here in Gainesville it's very good from the standpoint of um, we don't worry about hurricanes so they don't they don't come here and if they do they've lost so much power that our problem here is just stay away from the trees which we have a metric ton of metric shit ton of i actually heard somebody use that phrase i, I consider that my phrase uh a metric shit ton of something and i heard somebody use that phrase in an interview yesterday and i'm like what what are you doing with my phrase, damn it? <laughs> kind of caught me off guard.
Let's see what we got here. Make sure we don't. Uh... Man, I gotta catch up on those videos. It's famous for being a college town. Yeah, that's 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 here. That's why we're here. Dad used to teach at the University of Florida, and we came in 1981, and we've been here since. So it gets better every year. Maybe not this year. This year, no year is better, but the year of annoyance. Although I'm guessing this year is going to roll into next year. Mark my words. Mark my words, but yeah, this is definitely a college town. At least we're up to like 150,000 people now, so you know we've got we got some other stuff here too. But I don't do none of that stuff, so. There we go, now he's coming to life. Yeah, paint this pasty white skin on this dude. <laughs> Does that make you an automatic Gators fan? Well, I don't watch any sports at all. I don't like sports fans, so nah. I don't like any other teams anymore. Did that answer your question? No, nah. we find out when the game's on and that's when we go eat. We're going to go out to eat. I've lived here since 1981. I've only been to two games ever. One of them was in 1997. And one of them was in like 1985 or 84. So. Hello. Hold on. Let me find out who you are. You ready? You want to get ready? Okay. Okay, that's my breakfast date with the daughter, so we're going to be, uh, we're going to take off and do that. So, anyway, what did we do? Three hours and 42 minutes. Okay, not bad. Um, anyhow, thanks for joining me, all five of you. And, uh, anyhow, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do some more painting later today, but we will if we can. So, uh, we'll, um, we're going to take a break here and, uh, before I leave, I'm gonna I'm going to spray coat these knights because that's one of the three uh, coatings. We're gonna do the gloss coat on them so that that can start setting until we come back. Do the flat when I get back. Let that dry, and then we'll do the uh, the dull coat, top coat, brush on after that. But anyhow, so anyways, thanks for joining me, and um, you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, happy painting. See ya.